record. Hey, welcome back to Parrot Gaming Productions, where my name is Jared, and this time I have a guest from across the pond again, Anna. Anna, go mm -hmm. ahead and introduce yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hi guys, my name's Anna. Uh, I live in Switzerland. I'm also a gamer, not like very hardcore, but I like the occasional game here and there. Um, not, I don't have a personal podcast. Yeah. I don't have a podcast of my own, but a good friend of mine has one, so it's called Before Nandor, and, you know, go check it out. It's fun. As always, the links will always be in the descriptions kind of for you. Mm -hmm. All you got to do is click, and it'll take you on out mm -hmm. there. So, Anna, you, we were talking a little bit about a game that you were uh, playing earlier, Genshin, mm -hmm. Genshin Impact. Did I say that right? Yeah. 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 So what, what kind of, what drew you into Genshin? Like, what, what was it? Where did it start? Mm hmm. I guess like a little bit about me, I am a huge massive weeb and generally really <laughs> like JRPGs. Uh, so it kind of has this like anime-ish uh, art style. It's actually from China, not from Japan, but you know, the art style is there and it's really fun. And at some point, like, especially during pandemic times in winter, I was very bored and I heard about it and I was like, you know what, I can just, you know, try it out. Why not? And then I just kind of, you know, like, it has a nice storyline, fun characters, really, really nice music, um, and it just kind of fit for me, and I've been playing ever since. What What is it about the JRPGs that really draw you into everything? Mm, I am really a sucker for, like, story and characters when I play games, so, you know, that's, like, that. Like I do play, like, other types of games, but that's kind of, like, that's where I'm, like, emotionally drawn to, so, like, if I can, like, get invested in a character, be like, oh... There's this like huge amount of lore and backstory and you can kind of read everything and piece everything together. Like that's kind of, like that's just really fun for me. The mo that's the most fun for me. Sorry, English is kind of hard sometimes. Um, <laughs> no, it's okay. But, but yeah, that's kind of uh, like, that's the thing for me. Kind of this maybe emotional attachment. That's kind of like, that's what hooks me mostly with games. You know, I, that's one thing I, I always forget is that when I go on Reddit, I'm like, hey, mm -hmm. Reddit, tell me, like, if you want to be on my podcast, mm -hmm. and I forget that it's, I'm from America, the worst country mm -hmm. in the world, and it's like, <laughs> you know, like, there's this one time this gal, she's like, oh, I'd love to be in your podcast, but I'm French, and it's like, oh, that might be a problem, <laughs> you know, <laughs> because I don't speak French, I, I failed three languages in high mm -hmm. school, so, <laughs> it's... Mm -hmm. And well, so yeah, I, I give I give uh, a lot of you guys props mm -hmm. because you'll sp I, I know that a lot of people over in Europe can speak like four languages or something like crazy like that, and it's just <laughs> insane. So, um, so with the Lauren story, I guess what makes a good story for you in a video game? Mm. I mean, it really does depend on like the the individual game. Like, there's so many types of stories you can tell. Like, sometimes you like something very basic, you know, some oh, my girlfriend was kidnapped and I need to save her, like maybe a little bit up, like above Mario, but not that far away. <laughs> and that could just be like really kind of fun and cute. And sometimes you have these games who have like the deepest lore of thousands and years and 10 million books, or you have like really like deep, deep storylines, gotta get like very psychological plot twists here and there. And that can be also its own kind of fun. But I guess like if it's all, like if it all fits together, like sometimes you can tell, oh, a story, they really tried to do something, but it kind of failed at the end. And that's always kind of a bit of disappointment. But if it just kind of is, is coherent and if it works together, like from beginning to end, then I think that's like, like it did its job well. And so if, as long as it, it's cohesive and it's put together well. Yeah, I mean, yeah. sometimes you do get games like... I don't know if, if I don't know about your audience, but like I've also played a lot of Kingdom Hearts and you know the first game is kind of basic. Again, just cute storyline, kids traveling worlds, finding their friends, whatever. And then near like the more you play and the more games you have, the kind of more complicated it gets. And there's like, but actually this character planned this 10 million years ago, and then they orchestrated all the events of the past 10 games to get to this point in time. And you can tell that's not what they planned from the beginning. <laughs> you can just tell and, you know, it's still fun. Like, it's kind of fun to make fun of it, but like you mm -hmm. can tell it's not like the highest tier of writing. <laughs> You, you know, you're not the first person I've heard say that about Kingdom Hearts, where it's like nice, yeah. <laughs> structured, it's going well, and then they ran out of ideas, and then they just kind of took a left turn. 
so <laughs> yeah a little bit i mean i still love this series but like i can admit that it's not perfect in any way <laughs> do you uh so with the jrpgs do you play mm -hmm. in the the native language where they come out from like do you do you play them in japanese or do you oh yeah. i wish i mean i <laughs> i did a few like japanese classes but like not nearly enough to understand the whole game like my level is like hello my name is anna Where's the toilet? Like, <laughs> that kind of thing. Just the essentials, but, right? Just the essentials. Yeah, yeah, basically. Like, if I am, like, stranded in Tokyo, I could probably find my way somewhere, but, yeah. And uh, there's the birds. Uh, my neighbor's got a go-kart. <laughs> my neighbor's got one of those oh. golf carts or whatever that he just got oh. a couple days ago, and he takes just... <laughs> he's, he's uh, like, he's remodeling everything. He's crazy. I love <laughs> him to death, but he's weird. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so, mm -hmm. um... As well, I apologize if you hear the birds in the background, they will be there. That's that mm -hmm. is one of the reasons why it's always better to do the podcast at night. But mm -hmm. you're from Sw Switzerland, you said, or Sweden? Yeah, Switzerland. Switzerland. Yeah. So it's like mm -hmm. what eight o'clock at night your time or six? Uh, it's six right now. Six. Okay. So that's fine. But <laughs> what are some tropes? Because uh, like I uh, mm -hmm. I watched a, a, a mm -hmm. I read a manga called Love Hina. Do you know about it at all? I've heard about it, but I've never yeah. read it myself. And I've kind of noticed that there are a lot of tropes in 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 their writing styles or the way they portray certain characters. Is there anything uh, about the JRPGs that you're just like, I can't stand when that ha when this certain thing happens? Um, I guess it really like depends because like certain tropes can be done well or done badly. So if it's like you know the cliche of cliches, and that's always kind of okay. I've seen this ten million times before. I guess like one thing that does kind of rub me the wrong way usually is when it's like overly sexualized women and like you know i you know i'm bisexual i love sexy women you know i'm all for it but they also need to have a personality like at least that like if it's just if it's just like a boob that's like boobs that speak then you know that's kind of not <laughs> great <laughs> or you know sexualized men just as well like i want to the armor for men please <laughs> game developers like oh are you kidding me i would rock a mankini if it gave me the stats that some of those lady characters have oh mm -hmm. yeah 100 percent. just put the pasties on put the little little man thong on i'd run around <laughs> like hardcore that'd be so awesome yeah so i mean yeah just you know gender <laughs> equality 21st century everyone should be in skimpy clothing that's just fair i'm right there with you i hate oh like <laughs> I, I like when they buy into it. They're like, we know what we're doing. So here, mm -hmm. you know, I'm like, I can respect that. I can totally respect yeah, yeah, that. It's fair. But when, mm -hmm. when they're just like, Hey, uh, who was it? Uh, quiet out of metal gear solid. You know, mm -hmm. I remember my first introduction to her. It was just like, I'm like, why is she wearing a bikini <laughs> on the battlefield? Like, and then it's like, uh, yeah. she feeds off rain. It's okay. It's like, what? <laughs> huh? Wait, clothes burn. Her. I'm sorry. Wait, what? But and so like like I and then it, it just no just mm -hmm. be like I want to make a hot female character okay mm -hmm. I'm fine with that that's okay mm -hmm. um, when it comes to sexuality in games um, mm -hmm. how how do you feel about the whole romance kind of tropes and maybe some of the love triangles mm -hmm. that people get into or, or the just sexualization mm -hmm. of, of video games is there anything that you can't stand anything that you like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess when you mention love triangles, it is very much the cliche, like, two guys and a girl, one, like, two girls and a guy, and it's like, when it gets in this kind of, like, bitching at each other over some other person, then, you know, that's always kind of just ugly to see, like, I kind of, I don't know, like, I've, I've read stories where that's handled really, really well, and so when I see it handled really badly, then it's always just kind of like, come on, you know, you didn't have to do this. Like, <laughs> no, I, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, have you seen The Walking mm -hmm. Dead? Perhaps. I haven't. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Probably yeah. don't. Mm -hmm. um, I know it's. I know mm -hmm. it's really good, but mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I, I'm really weird about love mm -hmm. and sex and stuff like mm -hmm. that in TV shows. Mm -hmm. And they had a weird love triangle that really just mm -hmm. ruined like everything for me. And Aww. it's it's funny because like it's easily explainable. Like you could just explain mm -hmm. it away in 30 seconds. Be like, dude, mm -hmm. we thought you were dead for like a year. <laughs> I mean, that's fair. Like, did you guys wait six months before you started trying to date and stuff? And yeah, that's probably about right. Okay, no, I, that's fair. You know, like they thought mm -hmm. they thought yeah. them, so, but like, 
I yeah, I'm I'm not big on the cliche. Anything cliche, it's just like get out. Of, no, go away. I don't I don't want mm -hmm. it. So I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Are there? Because uh, I know you said you play other games outside of like the JRPGs. So mm -hmm. what are some of the games that you play to relax beyond the normal ones that you play? Mm, to relax. Yeah. I mean, I mean in general, like I do play JRPGs also to relax, but um. I guess like lately I have started playing Hades again. Like I started a bit and then I play that and that's quite a lot of fun. Um, it's kind of sad, but I do play like 99% of RPGs. <laughs> um, I don't know. No, it, no, nothing else really comes to mind. It's just, yeah. No, that's understandable. Like when mm -hmm. I play video mm -hmm. games, like I, I mm -hmm. play, like I said, I play a lot of first person shooters like Insurgency mm -hmm. or, or maybe I'll go into Fallout 4 or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then I've got like Raft or I've got Minecraft or I've got some of these mm -hmm. games where you just take a back seat, you know, you just, you kind of relax mm -hmm. for a quick second. So I, I know that sometimes people have like mm -hmm. those games where they're just like, okay, this mm -hmm. is, I'm done. I don't need to try so hard anymore. Mm -hmm. So oh, I was just yeah, kind of I, I, I mean, I guess I... Like, it was more like last year, but I have played, you know, Animal Crossing when it came out, like, for the Switch. Or sometimes I replay Pokemon games, which I guess does kind of count as JRPG, but it's also like, oh, it's just something I know. It's fun, just pressing some buttons, you know, and, like, I don't really have to, like, have my whole brain concentrate on that <laughs> just to, like, play a little bit of that. So, so uh, mm -hmm. you would kind of you had kind of mm -hmm. mentioned the uh, mm -hmm. the breath of the wild is kind of mm -hmm. like Genshin or it, they're like a kind mm -hmm. of a, a copy yeah. paste. Um, mm -hmm. How did you feel about Breath of the Wild? Uh, I haven't actually played it myself. <laughs> uh, I mean, th th this is the thing. Like, I do play games, but a lot of the like mainstream stuff. Like, I've never played a Zelda game, which you know, <sighs> terrible. Blasphemy. You know. Bl blasphemy you know get me to gaming jail um i mean i have seen playthroughs of it but for me personally i just kind of like didn't get like it's fun to watch like streamers play it and stuff but i then never felt like it's a game that i personally would enjoy playing you ever watch a streamer and you're like i could play that mm -hmm. i got that and then you join and mm -hmm. you just get smacked around like it's nothing <laughs> I guess it was kind of my experience with hades at first because i've also never like played roguelikes before and i was like wait Oh, I die a lot. Oh shit! But then that's kind of the point. So <laughs> that's fine. Uh, when it when it mm -hmm. comes to the difficulty of a game, uh, mm -hmm. uh, just kind of on the you die a lot. Mm -hmm. Is there a difficulty that you like always set yourself up for, or mm -hmm. are, are you like a you easy, very hard survival? Like where do you kind of sit? Mm. I guess usually I just start a game in like normal mode to like test the waters and see how it goes. And like if I really feel like it's too easy then i might go like on hard or like whatever comes after hard like depends on how many difficulties you have in a game um but yeah i mean i'm fine playing a normal mode like i'm not the 100 percent completionist like get every single achievement 10 billion damage like that's not i don't have the time for that i have like a life otherwise <laughs> uh so I mean, i'm fine just like going through it like once like on decent difficulty so i'm not bored and that's fine have you ever played on a harder difficulty and then just like th like a couple times later you're just like oh that's right i am on extremely hard and you're like oh i'm pretty good at this <laughs> yeah i did play the first kingdom hearts game on hard which is considered kind of more difficult than the others because like the controls are still kind of clunky and it's like an older game and everything and i went through it like decently okay like i was like oh this is actually not too bad and then the final boss is just <laughs> i don't want to, i ca had to restart so many times like 15 or 20 times and i was like what the hell what is this like why did i do this because you can't change the difficulty afterwards so i just kind of <laughs> like i don't know i tried to grind out but then grinding also takes a while so I just tried again and then at some point like at some point you just have to decide okay i'm gonna stop for today and then, like, two days later, I managed it, like, second or third try, so... Oh, I love that. I love that. Yeah. When you just, just like, fuck it, I'm done. I'm done tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And then, like, a week later, mm -hmm. you're just like, oh, that was too easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I uh, yeah. I try to... Tra I, I play mm -hmm. a lot of Fallout 4, and I try to challenge mm -hmm. myself with it. And mm -hmm. uh, for the one of my first challenges was, like, I'll set it to hard. Like, I was like, let's mm -hmm. make it a little extra difficult. And mm -hmm. now, like, I'll play through it, and it's like, oh... Like, I'll get smoke checked or something like that, where I just get taken mm -hmm. out by a random bad guy. I'm like, oh, that's mm -hmm. right. I'm on hard. I forgot. 
know, <laughs> so it, it's kind of interesting to kind of go from like, oh, I, because mm. like that's what I'm, I'm very casual when I play games. Mm-hmm. I'm like, let's put it on easy. I've just worked all mm-hmm. day. I just want to mm-hmm. annihilate a world for a minute. You know, I want to, I want to be yeah. the bad guy. And so now mm-hmm. it's just like, oh, that's right. I'm on hard. I for, totally forgot. Mm-hmm. So, um, are there any games that you would say that you play that are just not within that normal realm of a game that you would find yourself playing where you're just like, this is so outside of what I would normally do, but it's fun and interesting because I took a chance. Hmm. I guess like, I generally, I do not like horror games or horror movies. Like I'm kind of bad with like those kinds of things. But a while ago, I did play Eep, so it's spelled I-B, it's kind of this, like, RPG maker game, and it's kind of really creepy, and I was, like, <laughs> kind of, like, hard racing for, like, certain portions of it, um, but then, like, at the end, I was really glad that I kind of went through that and experienced that, so now maybe, maybe I should play a few more horror games, because they're actually, like, really good, but I'm also a baby, so we'll see. <laughs> I was, uh... <laughs> I was playing a horror game in the middle of the night mm-hmm. that uh, one of my friends from Canada had mm-hmm. actually inspired me. Mm-hmm. And I'm so much of a first person shooter that like when I get into mm-hmm. contact, I'm like, let's, let's fuck mm-hmm. this dude up, you know, let's go for it. <laughs> but all you have is a camera that's got like night vision mm-hmm. on it and you're supposed to sneak around. I'm not good mm-hmm. at being sneaky. I, I think, I, I think the first jump scare I got, mm-hmm. I turned on all the lights and I was like, I'm going to watch like baby shark or something like that. Like this is, <laughs> I need to reset everything right now. Mm-hmm. So yeah, no, like um what is it? jump scares are really the worst for me i'm also just like i feel like i get a heart attack immediately and i'll have to be like okay no i need to you know just go away for a while like drink some milk and like <laughs> restart maybe take a step back mm-hmm. yeah take a step mm-hmm. back yeah. is is there a game because uh, you would mention about the 100 mm-hmm. percent completionist thing mm-hmm. is there a game that you have 100 percented um Yes, I have 100% Near Automata um, when it first came out because it's also just basically my favorite game ever. Um, and it's kind of like, it's fun, funny because in this game you can buy trophies like after you finish the storyline and it's just like, there's an NPC who was like, hey, you know, like, I know getting all these trophies is really, really difficult. So like, what if you give me some money and then I'll just unlock it? Like, no one will know. You will just unlock the trophy like that. You know, your friends will never know, but I, I resisted and I did it the, the proper way, so. What is yeah. is it because the trophy, if the, was the trophy just like, mm-hmm. uh, an achievement basically. Right? Well, no, I mean, uh, mm-hmm. what am I trying to say here? Like, mm-hmm. you know, those dumb missions where they're like, oh, go mm-hmm. here, grab this and then come mm-hmm. back and we'll give you a trophy mm-hmm. for it. Just like some mm-hmm. silly little side mission like mm-hmm. that. Or are these mm-hmm. like actual legit missions where you're actually having to go mm-hmm. and complete things? I mean, a lot of it's like, you know, like complete, like, like, I don't know, 100% of the item list or like fish every fish in the world or get all the upgrades from this and this, which can be kind of difficult sometimes or like New York Thomas specifically has 26 endings. Wow. Uh, so, well, like, I mean, five of them are like main storylines and the other ones can be kind of joke ending. So like the game tells you to go one way and if you go another way, it's like, oh, your main character decided to abandon this whole thing and just go fishing for the rest of their life. <laughs> and, then you, and then you get kind of the credit roll. That's awesome. So, but a lot, but some of them, or like one specifically, is kind of like a hidden mega boss that you kind of have to defeat or no. To get the ending, you have to lose uh, to this mm. boss. It's kind of like a different ending where you kind of, you just die and you don't complete the storyline. But then once you do defeat it, you can't retry again. So that's kind of like a one chance per playthrough. And if you miss it, then you have to start another playthrough. That, that, like, that would be devastating. That would be utterly devastating. Just like you lose. (laughs) That's it. (laughs) Grind through the entire game again to get back to where you are and try again. Yeah, I did have one thing where I kind of had to, like, collect certain items and also miss the window for that. And I had to restart the game for that. I was like... I do love this game, but I don't want to replay it for another like fifty hours. <laughs> Here's your fifty k for the trophy. <laughs> you know, like I, I did do it. I can't prove it, but I did do it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> believe that, me, <laughs> that would just upset me. That would massively mm-hmm. upset me mm-hmm. so much. Yeah, I mean, it, it it'd be like that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! So, mm-hmm. um, 
Yeah, because that's what I was. That's what I was kind of curious mm-hmm. about. Is mm-hmm. is like, is it grind deep? Like, are these missions actual grinds to get through? Because if it's just because you know some mm-hmm. of those dumb missions where it's just like, oh, go mm-hmm. here, talk to Tony, and then you come back and it's like, congratulations, you unlocked the area. Here's mm-hmm. your trophy. You know, yeah, I'll pay for that. Mm-hmm. But if it's something where you mm-hmm. actually have to go through and do mm-hmm. things, no, I yeah, I can definitely understand that. Mm-hmm. Is there any specific game that you just will not buy? Like any specific type of game that you just like, this is not me. I do not ever want to try mm-hmm. this. These are ridiculous. Honestly, nothing really comes to mind. Like, again, I'm not the biggest fan of horror, so I might not buy like a full, like, I don't know, $60 video game for that because I probably won't enjoy it. But if it's like something like smaller or cheaper on Steam, then I might just go for it. Like, yeah, why not? You know, try it some new genre. Like, I'm not. I don't know, like nothing right now comes to mind. Like if someone is like, if it's like, oh, this game actively promotes Nazi ideas, then yeah, I guess not. <laughs> but that's not a bro. It's not like, you know, a genre, I hope. No, no yeah, I, I gotcha. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, like I dislike Fortnite. I just, I hate mm-hmm. Fortnite with a passion. Um, just, wow, why? Well, no, it's just because like you have those people who macro like i'm gonna macro you know number seven on the hot pad and it builds me this tower and it's just like because like I'll, I'll be sitting there and i'll hit you from a distance and then all of a sudden they're in a t- in a giant tower and i'm like that's mm-hmm. like i pulled out my pen and paper to build i like i can't mm-hmm. it just the the level mm-hmm. that some people go to be very good in games is just mm-hmm. insane and a lot of those games like the open like uh Call of Duty Warzone is the same mm-hmm. way. You have people who just put way too much time and effort into being mm-hmm. the best. And when I'm just like, boop, here I am on Friday night after work. I'm going to try the game. It's like, oh, mm-hmm. hey, I lasted five minutes. Cool. Uh, okay. Let's load up for another 20 minutes and try again. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's not yeah. fun. It's a little ridiculous. Mm-hmm. So. Okay, now that you mention it, I, I kind of refuse to play League because I... Uh, I've heard like a couple of people, like horror stories from like very toxic players. Like one of my good friends was uh, actually like a competitive player here in Switzerland, and she heard like so much bullshit from people. And like even after she stopped playing, she stopped playing. Like the same people kept kind of coming after her, and it's just it's not pretty. And like if you're just like a noob, then people make fun of you, and if you can kind of good, then people still make fun of you. So yeah, when it, when I log on. This is off mm-hmm. unless I'm talking with friends in a game or it's one of the few mm-hmm. communities where I know I can, you can I can mic mm-hmm. in and people are going to be nice. I very rarely ever turn on my mic very ever mm-hmm. rarely. And yeah. if I'm in a group with friends, you better believe everybody else mm-hmm. is muted and the game just I, I don't transmit mm-hmm. to the game. Um, Insurgency Sandstorm is a very militaristic shooter that I mm-hmm. uh, love to play. That community has been absolutely fantastic. They've been so opening and welcome. Mm-hmm. Um, I've never had a problem with them. But yeah, like those toxic communities are trash. I, mm. I ref- like the wows, the, 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 the league mm. of legends, all that stuff. I tend mm. to stay away from a lot of those because mm. it is that if, well, I mean, it's esports. it's a lot of esports mm. now. Like everyone's like, Oh, I play world. Just, blah. It's like, dude, just relax. Like, <laughs> like I like having fun. I like winning. Yes. Mm. I like trying, yeah, yeah. I like trying to be good, <laughs> but like, I don't need to mm. beat number five in the world. You know, like I don't need mm-hmm. to get up and I'm ranked number 10 good for you what do you do outside i don't do anything yeah there's a reason (laughs) (laughs) yeah pretty much like i did used to play overwatch and i never turned my mic on and anything but sometimes you know people would and you know they're like people can insult or just you can tell it's some kind of 12 year old who think it's really edgy to use racial slurs like come on you know (laughs) i i I don't vibe with that so I i i don't really want to do that either I, I've noticed that the more angry I get, the mm-hmm. the more harsh my language gets. And mm-hmm. when I there's a certain point to where I'm just like, oh, okay, I feel like using these really bad words. I need to quit. Mm-hmm. Like this is that's mm-hmm. uh, as because I'm 34 years old now. Mm-hmm. I've learned that depending upon where I am with the language that I'm using mm-hmm. depends on when I should just log off and watch some YouTube. <laughs> you know so. that, that's a really really good skill to have because i feel like even a lot of people older than you do not have that <laughs> yeah and what's what's really adorable is like i'll be playing with people and be like ah banana sandwich nice fucking kill <laughs> and people are like wait what and then they'll, they'll like message me and they're like why did you say nice kills like because you smoked me it was great like that nade was perfectly mm-hmm. placed like that's mm-hmm. the way i play you know if you mm-hmm. do something good i'm gonna t- you did great 
way to go, big guy. I was hunkered in that mm -hmm. bunker. You took me out. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. That's how you should play. There should just be love for mm -hmm. everyone, you know? Yeah, so. that's really true. Like, that, I'm, it makes me really, really glad that Genshin does not have a PvP mode. Like, you can play with other players, but it's all, like, co-op. Like, you don't have PvP, but if there was, I swear to God. It's like... No, I, I, like, I, would, I, would, I do consider myself a decent player. Like I have some like decent bills that I invested in, but if some like I don't know YouTube giga whale who spent ten thousand dollars wanted to like play against me and then make fun of me for it, I would be like, no, just fuck off. I I don't care. Well, that's why uh, whenever mm -hmm. whenever I would play against my buddy mm -hmm. Brandon because we used to play mm -hmm. all the time, and I'd be like, "Hey, let's one v one each other," and then mm -hmm. uh, it was nice because we go, "Okay, let's build a loadout, mm -hmm. and then let's try each other on that mm -hmm. loadout." So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I think we would play we would play in a hardcore team deathmatch where it's one v one, super low, everything is exactly mm -hmm. the same, and and that's where you really test your metal instead of the people mm -hmm. who are like, "Oh, I'm gonna bring this metal loadout that I'm really good at." Mm -hmm. It's like, no, 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 no. Yeah. Let's go a gun we've both never used with a setup we've never touched and go toe to toe. That's how you can tell your metal as a, as a as a person. And a lot of people don't want to do that. Nobody wants to do that. And it's and I understand why because like I played a I played a buddy of ours who kind of mutual and he smoke checked mm -hmm. me. I was not having fun. I was not having any fun. But I was mm -hmm. like, fair, you know, you got mm -hmm. me. Good on you. So. Um, I, I was going to ask you about that uh, PvP. Do you just mm -hmm. not like that in general, or? Mm, I don't mind it. Like again, I have played like Overwatch for a decent while when it was still kind of new. But overall, like it, it's it can be a little stressful. Mm -hmm. And again, if uh, like for me, like when I get into a game like i get into it for like a solid like couple of months mm -hmm. but when i like and then i do have the feeling okay i actually want to be decently good at this but like with pvp i feel like okay there's going to be like 10 million people who are so much better than me and they're also going to insult me in chat probably or from voice chat and i don't <laughs> want to deal with that <laughs> so yeah. i think generally i do tend to stay away from that and again like when i play games like i do mostly focus on like a lot of story stuff which you tend to get less in pvp generally mm -hmm. as far as i know or yeah. i can't think of anything that's like pvp and also really story based so yeah there there's a very uh story based mm -hmm. uh, are you pc mm -hmm. uh do you pc play uh my pc is not that great i'm mostly on ps4 but okay like again dep depends on like how how much uh it takes up oh uh there was a there was an old school tabletop game mm -hmm. called uh mm -hmm. vampire the masquerade where it's Dungeons and Dragons, mm -hmm. but vampires, mm -hmm. which is really cool. Okay. And like, mm -hmm. you can kind of set the game in whatever genre. Well, they turn that into a PVP battle Royale style kind of game. Oh, and interesting. it's for PC and I tried it and it was really mm -hmm. like, it was, um, I'm, I'm good with lore. Like I like a nice mm -hmm. story, but when the mm -hmm. first hour of the game is learning mm -hmm. all of the lore and everything that goes with it mm -hmm. and everything else that comes with it. It's a mm -hmm. learning curve, and I don't do well. Mm -hmm. Like I said, give me mm -hmm. a gun, point me in a direction, and I go. Mm -hmm. Like, if there's a little bit of, like, with Fallout 4, here's mm -hmm. your gun, your kid was taken, go find the Institute and kill them. It's like, mm -hmm. you got yeah. it, coach! <laughs> you know, so... Yeah, yeah, that's kind of straightforward, but... <laughs> yeah. I think, like, if like if it's, like, a good lore, then I probably would get really into it, because, like, I really like that kind of getting invested in, like, good lore and things like that. Like, making theories is also so fun so for me, so... It's got some good lore. If mm -hmm. I didn't have to remember mm -hmm. to hit all the buttons and what everything mm -hmm. does, I'd be... Yeah, there's blue. That's... Mm -hmm. This is what oh. happens. Yep. Hi, blue. <laughs> hey, buddy. You want to say hi? He's probably going to try to chew on my cord. Um, but, yeah, oh. it's, the lore is pretty good. Like, the game is fun itself, mm -hmm. but, like, it... It's mm -hmm. just, it's really heavy. Um, have mm -hmm. you ever played those games where it can be like PvP, but also PvE? So like it has the player versus mm -hmm. player aspect, mm -hmm. but you're like, co you can you cooperate with people at the same time? Like, like an MMO or like, no. what's an example of well, that? Um, <laughs> trying to think here. There was a game that I played called The Cycle. Um, that mm -hmm. was in beta. But basically... Mm -hmm. uh, like um i i, I don't god I don't, mm -hmm. i'm drawing a blank now i'm put on the spot and i'm drawing a blank <laughs> yeah yeah it happens but, but like, i guess no nothing comes to mind for me for well, now have you heard of the game escape from tarkov 
No. No. So, um, so Escape from Tarkov mm-hmm. is is basically your mm-hmm. private military contractor, and mm-hmm. you can loot. It's kind of a loot 'em shoot 'em game, and you mm-hmm. spawn in with a bunch of other private military guys, and you also spawn in with a bunch of enemies who can be controlled by players, mm-hmm. but are also uh, AI. But mm-hmm. well, the problem is, okay. anytime you know a player character who's the military sees another military person, they try to mm-hmm. kill that person. I, I just, mm-hmm. I don't like when there's, a, when it's, you know, a PvP, but also PvE, because at times, like, if mm-hmm. I see another player or character, I'm just gonna be like, hey, buddy, have fun doing what you do, and I'm gonna go on my business, mm-hmm. right? But mm-hmm. anytime a player or character sees me, they're like, oh, gotta kill this guy, and it's like, just because there's the player versus player aspect, mm-hmm. and you're also mm-hmm. fighting the environment, doesn't mean you have to kill the other player that's there. You can just be friends. You know? Yeah, yeah, that sounds kind of stressful. Like, if if anything, uh, that should probably be like separate modes, like one that's like PVE where you kind of cooperate, and one that's yeah. PVP like separately. Because if everything is like at the same time, then that's just like, like who do I trust? Or like, I don't feel like getting killed by. I guess I would will be sooner or later. So yeah, it it just it's super annoying to me that anytime there is a player versus player aspect in a game, mm-hmm. that usually you got to cooperate against the environment to do. Mm-hmm. There's the ninety percent of giga chads out there that are that, that you so eloquently put that are just gonna go after you. They don't care. Mm-hmm. They they oh that's yeah. another player I gotta kill. No. We're taking on dinosaurs mm-hmm. in the rainforest. Just chill out. Come on, man. You know it's, yeah, it's the dinosaurs just, are the bigger problem right now, probably. <laughs> yeah, because I don't I don't need to get third party like uh, in this cycle. You're on you're on this mm-hmm. mystical planet. And like mm-hmm. you got you, you're like you're farming and do, you're you're doing all this other stuff. It wasn't really fleshed out. Mm-hmm. It was more of an alpha than a beta, to be honest with you. And like you're doing all the side stuff, and then I'm fighting all these like dinosaur esque creatures, and then I hear gunshots coming from my right. I'm like, fuck, this is gonna be a problem. And of course, wow. as soon as I know he sees me, because the bolt shift my way, and now I'm fighting these dinosaurs and I'm fighting this dude, and it's mm-hmm. just it's not a fun game. It, it just, I don't, mm-hmm. I, I wish that they would, I mean, PvP mm-hmm. is fun. The Battle Royale mm-hmm. style is fun. Give me a, give me a cooperative player versus environment. I don't need to be able to mm-hmm. fight other players all the damn time. I know it's, yeah. I know it's the meta in gaming right now, but mm-hmm. knock it the fuck off. <laughs> you know? So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I agree with you. Like, I don't have the experience, but it just sounds like way too stressful just to like, Again, if you feel like just fighting the environment with other people, then you shouldn't have to worry about those people killing you as well. Yeah. So. And, and that's one of the reasons why mm-hmm. I love Insurgency mm-hmm. Sandstorm is because mm-hmm. you can load log in and it's like you and eight other people mm-hmm. fighting against the environment. It's all cooperative. Mm-hmm. And I like that. I like that. Mm-hmm. So I, I guess, um, oh, look at that. Mm-hmm. 30 minutes on the dot. How do you like mm-hmm. that? Yeah. Them apples. I love it. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, <laughs> Quick question here. Uh, it's mm-hmm. Just kind of transitioning because uh, mm-hmm. my brain is horrible. Switzerland, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's it like over in Switzerland compared to other people that you maybe have uh, interacted with that you know about? Uh, I mean. Well, let me rephrase it. What's life like <laughs> in Switzerland? Let's 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 go that way. I, mean, I don't think it's that different from like the rest of Europe or I guess like the US as well. Like it's a lot smaller. Um, <laughs> Like a lot, a lot smaller. Yeah. Uh, the, but we have a lot of like different landscape stuff, which as but it's also close by, so you can take like a train for one to two hours, and you're like in the Alps or by some pretty lake or like That's whatever. <laughs> yeah, or, like I guess the thing in Europe in general, like if you live right on the border, you can also just like cross the border and go to a different country, which is nice because Switzerland is very very expensive so if i just like hop on over to germany 20 minutes away they're like my shopping cost half as much really yeah it's like swiss people do earn a lot more on mm-hmm. average but everything is also accordingly more expensive so you know like life is good here but i'm also like a student so i don't earn like i don't have a full-time job so that's kind of <laughs> difficult <laughs> yeah i was gonna ask are you in your mm-hmm. dorm room right now is that where you're at uh I have an apartment, oh, okay. um, like with like some roommates and stuff. But yeah, I'm, I am a student. <laughs> no, that that's okay. I was just I was like that because yeah. like when you logged in, I was like, I bet she's in university. She like that's yeah. that's a very you know that's a very university. It, it's the light strip in the background, like it, that, 
<laughs> that's the one. I, I'd, I'd walk you and show you my light strip. I've got this really cool blue LED light that I've had for years, Ooh, and I love it. It nice. uh, It's really nice because uh, in, mm -hmm. in the bedroom, I like just a little bit of light when I go to sleep with a mm -hmm. little bit of ambient noise, and it just kind of oh, okay. glows from the underneath, and it's, it's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. What universe? Uh, okay, well, what are you trying to major in? Uh, pharmaceutical science. <laughs> you're gonna make a lot of money you're gonna be real happy growing up <laughs> hopefully <laughs> what uh if I, if I don't drop out or get kicked out <laughs> are you like are you failing out right now or <laughs> uh, there's certain exams i have to pass in winter or else i gotta get kicked out of the major but it'll be fine it's fine <laughs> are you like are they like so much of a percentage of your grade that you're just like you no, can't so cut I, it i mean it's like, I mean, here there kind of is like certain like modules with different subjects and you can compensate your grade like within them. Oh, okay. But I have like failed them and you only get one, like you get two tries basically. And if I fail the second time and I can't compensate it, then yeah, you just fail and get kicked out. <laughs> it, do you have a backup plan then I take it? Uh, Not really, not yet. <laughs> I mean... There's like other majors I could try, but not all of them because like depending like if if you fail the subject, like if I fail like a chemistry subject here with pharmaceutical, then I can't study chemistry that uses the same subject as well, go which figure. is difficult. Or, you know, go abroad somewhere or <laughs> I don't know, find a job for a year or two and see what I can do after that. But I am trying my best, which is hard, but, you know. Wish me luck, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> how uh, I'm curious. How is how has COVID hit you guys out in Switzerland? Uh, have you been doing a lot of you know like this uh, schooling, or have you been just like going? Yeah, to yeah, they, yeah, yeah. Like they switched like after two weeks of like the that you know spring semester. Like we switched to online. It was basically all online until now. Like we had like some like laboratory stuff that was still in person which was very very nice because like i have like missed people and you know <laughs> like i'm very introverted but at some point like even the pandemic you're like i just need to talk to someone like <laughs> please just human interaction um but yeah like the like school was pretty much all online which did hit me like kind of hard because i do like really like you know going to a place and like sitting there and having like somewhere to concentrate which is like very difficult when you're at home all day mm -hmm. and it's the same desk where like I game or worse, watch YouTube, but I also have to like watch lectures on it, which does not work like, no. at all. Yeah, I, I, I love it because like when I, when the pandemic first started, I would purposely extend my uh, my visits to the grocery store just because I was like, I need, I don't care if it's the crazy old lady shopping, I just need to be around people. And, mm -hmm. and I love it because like this is, this is where I work. Mm -hmm. I work from home. Mm -hmm. So like I literally yeah. just log out. All right. All right, let's go on to YouTube. <laughs> you know, it's just it's kind of it's kind of dumb because I just yeah. take a step mm -hmm. back, a breather. I'm like, all right, let's mm -hmm. let's jump right into it. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I am curious about this whole like mm -hmm. I just jump over to Germany and the prices are cheaper. Mm -hmm. Um, so like, is it is it literally cheaper just to get that ticket to go to Germany and then come back and it's already paid for itself in that trip, Phallus. <laughs> Oh, well, there's a, my neighbor's got a cat and like mm -hmm. they'll see like a, a piece of paper rolling around on the ground. Mm -hmm. And because mm -hmm. like they've been with me for six years, I think mm -hmm. six or seven, five or six years now. So they know everything that goes on mm -hmm. outside. Yeah. But that one random thing that comes through <laughs> and that's you're like, hey, hey. And then I know Helios might start to scream. And so I got to I got to catch him real quick and be like, it's I, I got you. Mm -hmm. I see it, homie. So, yeah. <laughs> But, I, like, is it really that cheaper to travel that, like, well, I guess mm -hmm. I should ask, how far is it to Germany? I mean, I live literally on the border, so there's literally, like, a direct tram, like, from my city to Germany, which is kind of nice, but, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, it depends on where you're, obviously, if you're in the middle of the country, you need, like, maybe two or three hours to Germany, which is, you know, a little bit far for, like, your, like, weekly grocery trip or something, but, mm -hmm. yeah, like, for me, like, I can literally just, like, like, buy a ticket for like i don't know four dollars i think it would be go there and like i don't know like it's literally just like regular groceries are sometimes just half as like half as expensive or you can also sometimes get the return on taxes because switzerland is not in the eu so you can kind of do like the that thing uh and then you just come back and you know 
it, it, it's great. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so, do you use a Swiss franc? Is that what you guys use? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Swiss francs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I, mm -hmm. I'm, 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 I'm well versed. I know what goes on over there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed because like a lot of like even a lot of people in Europe think that Switzerland uses the euro or is in the EU, and we're like, no, we're we're independent. <laughs> we don't belong to you guys in Europe. Well, I know, I know that there's been a lot of turmoil with uh, mm -hmm. with with that, and I. I, I was in the military for six years and mm -hmm. I traveled overseas, uh, well, five times actually. So I kind of, mm -hmm. I've kind of hit the points, you know, it was mm -hmm. part of, is part of our training to learn about, oh, you might land here. So this is, you know, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, I, I, so when it, uh, I, 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 I have heard this because it's interesting that you mentioned mm -hmm. if you live in the middle of Switzerland, it's like a four hour train light ride. Mm -hmm. When it comes to traveling, what's mm -hmm. a long distance, uh, journey for you mm -hmm. yeah i mean that that depends because i know like in the u.s oh it's taken like eight hour road trip in the same state and that's like you know like a day trip whereas yeah. here like eight hours is you can go to like i don't know like three different countries depending <laughs> on where you are um so yeah that would definitely be considered like a long trip for me okay because i was i was listening to another mm -hmm. podcast mm -hmm. where uh people mm -hmm. were talking about like oh i, I think it was the uk where mm -hmm. like Someone's like, oh, I visit my parents like once or twice a year. And they're like, well, how far do you mm -hmm. live away from your parents? And they're like, 45 minutes. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, okay. I, I live 45 minutes away from my parents. And I visit my mm -hmm. mom like almost every mm -hmm. month. So mm -hmm. like, like half an hour, like, cause for me to get into town is like 10, 15 minutes just to mm -hmm. get to where I'm going. That's like a yeah. normal day for me, a half hour travel. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I just I, I guess like in the US, like there's a lot more a lot more reliance on cars and like everything is a lot more spaced out. Whereas yeah. here, like like my city is not that big. I can literally walk through the whole city in like half an hour and get like to every like major thing, like my university, like shops or you know, like cafes, whatever. Like most of it is really like that close. I would love that. Are you kidding me? <laughs> To not have to own a mm -hmm. fucking car? Excuse my f bombs yeah. here, but like that'd be so. I mean, dope. I don't care. So okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that'd be so dope. You know, just mm -hmm. open my door, get go to the cafe, be back in twenty, and I could literally hit mm -hmm. everything I wanted on the way there. Like that's so yeah, awesome. That's... Yeah, that is really really nice. Like I could not like. I guess like if you live like in a major city somewhere in the U.S., like New York or L.A., you can kind of maybe get places with like yeah. a medium by foot, but like I don't know, subway or whatever, but like anywhere else like you need a car like i don't even own a license and i don't need to have one so. <laughs> that's so amazing uh my friend in yeah. canada moved into mm -hmm. an apartment moved into a condo and she was mm -hmm. telling me how there's like a mini grocery store downstairs there's like a pizzeria there's like a yeah. there's like a couple like mm -hmm. just cool little mm -hmm. things that are just like downstairs mm -hmm. like that would be mm -hmm. i yeah i i would pay for the condo that the condo would pay for mm -hmm. itself i don't need a vehicle mm -hmm. i can work from home i can literally just mm -hmm. walk five minutes down the, mm -hmm. i'm on the third floor go to the basement floor whatever hey groceries cool done uh, upstairs i'd mm -hmm. never leave yeah. i'd never leave <laughs> <laughs> damn yeah i mean yeah, it is kind of like my groceries are also like at least you have like four or five stores like five minutes away i've been walking distance and like there's like a Starbucks or like some kind of like restaurants. Like I do live like pretty in the center of the city. Like there's like mm -hmm. other like suburbs around it that don't have it as easy. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm I am lucky where like everything is really that close, that, which is really nice. I mean, I would don't, don't get me wrong. I would love mm -hmm. to live in the middle mm -hmm. of in the middle of the. I almost mm -hmm. said where I live, and I, I'm fine <laughs> not, saying. Not doxing you. I'm not fine. Doxing yourself. Yeah, I'm fine <laughs> saying I live in central Wisconsin. Wisconsin's mm -hmm. a pretty big freaking place, mm -hmm. but like my rent is pretty much like my, if I moved from this tiny little half trailer and I moved into town because mm -hmm. I live where a university is. And there are a lot of universities in Wisconsin, best of luck. Mm -hmm. Um, it's mm -hmm. it, my price is like almost doubled, if not tripled, like mm -hmm. for a one yeah. bedroom, a one bedroom apartment, it's like mm -hmm. anywhere between six to 800 bucks a month to live. Whereas mm -hmm. here in this tiny little half trailer, 345 mm -hmm. bucks a month. Not bad. Yeah. No. No, yeah, I think I mean, I'm I can, fine. <laughs> I mean, I can say that also, like, rent is, like, pretty expensive for me as well. Like, I get normal city, like, city prices for here, I would say. And I am sharing, like, the apartment. And it's, like, like it's a decent apartment, I can say. Like, I've definitely been in worse places out of desperation. 
um but yeah i mean i also i mean it is also like a lot more expensive than like in like different countries in europe like i know my i have a good friend in germany she just moved out of her parents house and she pays half as much as i do and i'm just like nice fine i guess <laughs> maybe you need to take the tram to go live in germany and then just commute to school every so often i mean pe i mean people do that like That's it's literally so like you know like people who have like you know full-time jobs they live like right across the border but get a swiss salary accordingly and then go back to you know german living prices which <laughs> that'd be so <laughs> like, it's just win-win <laughs> That'd just be so awesome. You're like, I'm gonna go work where I make a lot of money, and then I'll come back and live in the hood. No worries. <laughs> I mean, it's literally pretty much it. It's uh, it's great for those who can like do that. So, uh, it would you because uh, you say it's it's quite expensive where you live. It's it's a considered nice. Um, does does having all the roommates really really help cut down on cost? Oh yeah, definitely. Like I, when I was like moving out and looking for apartments, like I have looked at like studio places or like, you know, one bedroom apartments. And, you know, I, I remember looking at this one place that was smaller than my one room right now, like the whole place. And it was mm -hmm. more expensive than what I pay now. <laughs> so like, so like, like it's like, if you're like one person, or even like just like a couple, maybe living together, it gets expensive, but like yeah. three, four people in a, like, uh, in one apartment, like, I, I don't know the German word, but like, you know, the, the, the English word I mean, but the, just students living together in a place in one apartment, it's so much cheaper. And like, that's pretty much what most people do here, unless like they can afford it or their parents are willing to pay for it and things like that. <laughs> I, I think the word that you're looking for is cohabitation. Yeah, yeah, that, that's the one. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, and the only reason I know that word is because I used it like, I used it like a couple days ago. <laughs> so that's the only reason why I remember yeah. it. Um, yeah, I guess like our, our university specifically doesn't have dorms, but there's like these private dorm places. There's like one from like some church who offer dorms or nice. like different places. But I also looked at those. They can be cheaper, but like the waiting lists are also like way long. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. We uh, we actually our university mm -hmm. actually just expanded mm -hmm. uh, its living quarters. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, um, they built like uh, they tore down this uh, they tore down this old place, and then mm -hmm. all of a sudden I was just like, "What's going on here?" And they're like, "Future site <laughs> of this this new thing for the university." I was like, "That's kind of cool." And now mm -hmm. instead of the old place, it's just this like I think it's like a three or four story just apartment building where the students can mm -hmm. live now. And I was, like it, it's big and like it just kind of like. It's it's funny because like it's a university town, so like it just explodes. It just like blows up. Like mm -hmm. as soon as the students get here, like I I know that mm -hmm. during the summer when a lot of the students are gone, I can go to Starbucks. Mm -hmm. I got like a ten minute wait if I'm lucky. If I'm lucky, mm -hmm. it's that long. Now when I come, it's like at least twenty minutes, or like it might all be all the way backed up mm -hmm. to where it's like oh let's go to the Starbucks downtown then instead. So mm -hmm. you know yeah, all the students need their Starbucks in the morning. So yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's 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 horrible because the Starbucks is right next to the university too, which makes it makes it yeah, even worse. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they if, if it's like right there and students, you know, it, it is kind of true. Like, you know, they need their coffee. Hey, props to them. They they were mm -hmm. smart about it. They're like, oh, the dorms are where? Yeah, okay, mm -hmm. let's go ahead and build it right here. Mm -hmm. You know, no, that, mm -hmm. that's smart. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I I am curious about this. Uh. Mm -hmm. Is it do you, is it mixed gendered where you, where you're at right now in your in your apartment where it's men and women? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean I have like uh, one guy and one girl like as a roommate as roommates. So are they a couple? Yeah. No. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> no, no, like we like we didn't really know each other before that, but um, we just kind of like found each other on like some online things. We're like, yeah, you know, looking for roommates and this in the city, and then we just kind of. Um, like I had like a different roommate and at first it was just uh, the two of us and the guy is actually one of her course mates. So she kind of like joined us then and now she has like an exchange. Now someone else is in her, in her room right now. So yeah. <laughs> okay. That's not bad. Mm -hmm. Is is it weird living? I, I, Cause I know mm -hmm. that it, it can kind of get mm -hmm. weird. I've, I've heard the, the college mm -hmm. weird stories where, <laughs> you know, guys and girls live together and it's just fucking chaos. Is it, is it a pretty, no. pretty smooth? No, here is like very, very smooth. Like we're, like we're not like best friends or anything, so we don't even talk that much. But like, like with the guy, like he's also like a gamer, very chill guy. Like when we talk, he's not like there that much for like he's maybe here for like half a week anyway. But 
he's also a gamer like we talk a little bit and you know it's fine he also has a girlfriend so maybe that helps <laughs> yeah yeah where he's going over to her house and stuff like that <laughs> yeah now that makes sense yeah because I've, I've just heard the horror stories where like you know the guys will bring the girls over or the dudes bring <laughs> you know the girls bring their guy over and <laughs> just things get weird and crazy and maybe america's just <laughs> sucks maybe america's just i mean chaos. i have heard i have heard horror stories from different people like i remember this one like friend of a friend we met once and he told me yeah he has this like he lives in a place with like seven or eight people and there was this one girl who was apparently really really horny for him who would basically like outright ask if he wants to sleep with her and like over and over again he would say no not interested like sorry you're nice but no and then she was just like kept pushing it pushing it to like at some point, she would like literally like lie naked on the floor and be like, you know. Oh my god! And no. I was like, no, that's basically no. sexual harassment. Like, don't do that. Don't do that. Anyone, don't don't do that. I I, I had a, a similar story. There was a girl when I was in the mm -hmm. military who had mm -hmm. the hots for me, and I did. I didn't know why, because like she like she was she was not really on my radar. She was not somebody mm -hmm. that I found conventionally attractive. And I, mm -hmm. I remembered why actually later. And like, what my, it was, it was kind of weird. Cause it was like a slow introduction to, I was like, she mm -hmm. finds me cute. That's kind of cool, but no thanks. <laughs> That's kind of cool. And I remember yeah. we were about to, we were about to do uh, PT where we were about to work out in this mm -hmm. giant old mm -hmm. B-52 hanger. And I'm sitting there watching mm -hmm. a documentary on like the old i the old iPod. You remember with the scrolly <laughs> wheel or whatever? Yeah, 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 yeah. And she's sitting there and she's like, hey, what are you doing? I was like, oh, I'm watching this documentary about uh, Carth. Uh, oh God, what is that guy's name? Uh, he destroyed Carthage. He, uh, he was, he was the guy that destroyed like Rome or whatever way back in the old school why can't i remember his name hannibal the barbarian there we go uh, hannibal. Mm, mm -hmm. yeah and i'm like i'm watching this guy about hannibal and how he destroys cartridge da, 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 da. and she's like oh that's cool can i suck your dick and i was like i'm sorry wait what what i was like i'm watching about history here can you like you gotta lead into it nicely like <laughs> yeah no i i don't understand when people are just direct like Maybe I'm just shy or any or something, but like this this part I don't know. It like basic human decency, like you know, just go from like, hey, what are you watching? To can I suck your dick? Like there has to be some kind of build up to that. Like oh, I think Hannibal was really cute. He's got a hot body. He's like yeah, I mean he he's leading an army. He's got to be kind of cute. Well, you're kind of cute. Oh, thanks. You know that's how you lead yeah. into it. You don't just be like hey, mm. meh. Mm, yeah. And uh, dating advice from gamers don't don't just say like care suck your dick. I mean it's it's flattering. It's very mm -hmm. flattering, but at the same time mm -hmm. I'm not prepared for that. I'm not prepared yeah. to <laughs> Yeah, I mean I've I've been on like dating apps and like some guys when like they literally are like, Hey, how you doing? And I'm like, Yeah, I'm fine, how about you? And then they're like, Oh, can I fuck your pussy? And I'm like like I would have been ready to talk to you like a normal person, but then you say this shit, like, that doesn't make you attractive, I'm sorry. <laughs> Can I ask, uh, what what age range are you part of? Like, are you 18 to um, 25 or? Early 20s. Early 20s, okay. Mm -hmm. That, uh, like, is it is it that crazy on the dating apps with, with that young of individuals? I mean, that, this is like very the exception, like most people are definitely like, trying to start a normal conversation but you know the occasional guy will like mostly guys <laughs> uh, will be like yeah you know yeah will be like you know like just go out you know yeah get like can i fuck your pussy or like you know want to come over term. I mean, like <laughs> i think it... I, or like like on that level or just you know just straight up like go from you know again hey how you doing i'm fine how are you and then like you know let's go fuck somewhere it's like like again i, I mean you know. a lot of people forget tinder was made just for hookups like tinder was originally created mm -hmm. to be like you're hot yeah i believe you're hot too like mm -hmm. where do you want to do it tonight that's mm -hmm. what it used to be like i mean but you can at least like like some people do ask, you know, hey, what are you looking for on this app? And then you can kind of say, yeah, you know, maybe I'm up for some fun. Oh, yeah, me too. Want to do something like that's what, that. Like, I can accept that. I can accept that. I have done that. It's perfectly fine. Yeah. But if you start with, you know, like, oh, can I fuck you? Like, you know, I, I, personally, that's not a turn on. <laughs> Here's the thing, though. Mm -hmm. When a woman says, I'm just looking mm -hmm. for some fun. 
that can mm-hmm. be interpreted like five different ways and i hate that that, that that's fair like i mean because... you can also ask you know like what kind of fun wink emoji but like still, like, <laughs> that's I, I gotten me unmatched actually because <laughs> this chick was like i'm looking for some fun i was like are we talking about like throwing discs at, at the disc golf course are we talking mm-hmm. about having some brews or you know and then i threw the winky emoji mm-hmm. in there and she's mm-hmm. like you pervert and unmatched me i was like I'd like said two other things, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, that I would find that weird. Like, I don't mind the question, like, what are you looking for? Do you want some fun? And, like, I do understand it as, you know, like, that kind of fun. Because, again, on Tinder specifically, that's, yeah. like you said, that's what you're here for. But I, I love like, the girls that know. are like, I'm on here for friendship. <laughs> it's like, okay, no, this is like, no. I mean, I, like, what I kind mean of... good luck, but yeah. uh, no. <laughs> You're... I, mean, I have met some friends, like some people that I met up and we became good friends, but that's like, you know, well, like, like I mean, that's not, this, it's not the primary purpose. Yeah. Well, like I've gone on, di- I've gone on a few dates, you know, where I was mm-hmm. just like, this is, I, I'm not feeling a, a, a spark. I mm-hmm. mean, like you're, you're a cool person. Like I'd like to go disc mm-hmm. golfing with you again, or I'd like to play mm-hmm. another video game with you or something like that. But yeah, mm-hmm. typically it's just like, I'm going to swipe left in real light and just delete your information. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Yeah, just so. unmatch, like, sorry, bye. <laughs> yeah. Um, so so mm-hmm. what is the uh, – that, and that's exactly why mm-hmm. I wanted to bring you on in the first place mm-hmm. is, well, now that I know you're bi, I've, I've mm-hmm. got a whole other slew of questions. Um, I mean, go ahead. I'm an open book, so, you know. <laughs> How is the dating world uh, as a woman looking for a man, if I can use those terms? Yeah. yeah that, okay. I mean – I, I'm horrible with PC. Like I, when it comes to the alphabet soup, I'm just like I don't I don't know it. There's there's terms. I, there's so many terms for the same thing. It confuses mm-hmm. me. So I just I try my best, and I'm just like Ew. this this I mean, like, this is what you're gonna get from me. So I mean, as part of the alphabet soup, I'm like you know it's it's <laughs> like it's fine. You know, most people will understand that. You know, most people are not familiar. So like again, don't use slurs. And maybe if you say like, hey, I'm not sure about this, like, is that correct? And then, you know, you're fine. Like, as I long mean, as you're not trying to be like offensive, then most yeah. people won't be offended. Like if I throw something out there and they're like, actually, it's this. I know that now. Okay, continuing mm-hmm. on. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. But so like, uh, I guess the two part here, uh, as a bi girl, is it like, is it kind of like how when I take a look, I'm like, Liam Neeson's hot. Oh, but Katy Perry, she's also like, is it that or is it kind of like this week I'm feeling dudes? Like, how does it work for you? Mm-hmm. I mean, for me, I'm, I would say I'm generally more into women. Like, I do think like even like straight women and like gay men would agree most women look better than most men. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I have looked at myself in the mirror too. Mm-hmm. I understand mm-hmm. what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I mean, I don't think like, you know, men are ugly or anything like that. Like, um just like you know personal preference like like if you have like a spectrum maybe i would lean more towards the (laughs) womenly side but you know again some dudes are hot and you know if we have like a connection then you know i'm down for that or if i have a connection with a woman or like a non-binary person i'm I'm down for anything as long as you know like you know hot people are hot that's my sexuality (laughs) hot people yeah no that's that's, that that should just be its own thing that yeah no they're hot yeah i'll I'll pick you Mm -hmm. i I don't care what you are. Yeah. Just come here. You're hot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, when, when you're, when you're on a dating site, um, mm-hmm. like Tinder, do you find it's mm-hmm. more difficult to, to, to go after the, the ladies or is it more difficult to go mm-hmm. after the guys? Is there a difference mm-hmm. that you've noticed? Yeah, I feel like, I mean, in general, women are a lot less direct. So like most, like if you match with most men, they will like write you first and, you know, whereas with women, it's, less than 50 percent i would say (laughs) but usually i would have to be like i don't know take the first step and be like hey i don't know maybe try to like ask some question about something in their profile or i don't know like like depend on you know the person and everything but like that could be kind of like more difficult first step where where you know women will be a lot more shy about these things whereas guys will be a lot more direct and be like you know again like hey you're like can, can I fuck you or at least, you know, like, what are you looking for? Or, you know, want to go out sometime? Like, you can get to those kind of questions a lot faster. Whereas with women, even I feel like there's, like, a lot more tiptoeing and it's just, you know, uh, where are we? What is okay? What is not okay? Um, I that, don't know. 
that that, that I just it, it boggles my mind because mm-hmm. I uh, I, I there, there there's a there's a lady in my life right now. I do mm-hmm. have a woman who is uh, actively pursuing me, and I'm mm-hmm. kind of actively pur- pursuing her. And mm-hmm. I've just kind of been having fun with the dating sites where, like, mm-hmm. I'll swipe right and then just see how long it takes mm-hmm. a woman to message me. And a lot of them just mm-hmm. don't. So mm-hmm. when a lady matches with another lady, mm-hmm. like, <laughs> like, 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 it, it almost seems like we're in a fucking paradox here. You know, it's like, well, I'm not going to message her yeah. first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know. I guess, like, for, for women in general, they're maybe less, like, active in dating and especially as, like, not straight women it can be also like more difficult to you know like what's appropriate or what's not or like how people like i don't know again like early 20s if that's the kind of the people that i'm looking for most of them might not even have had any kind of really like relationship experience like that and they don't yeah. even know how to navigate that which is understandable but <laughs> it's also frustrating if i don't know what to say and they also don't know what to say and we're just kind of like okay that this was nice i guess I, I just I, I like I don't know. Do you, do you find it it's it's difficult when you when you mm-hmm. talk like uh, with your with your female interactions? Mm-hmm. Just because of course I I don't have much insight on this. Mm-hmm. Um, do they respond very dryly? Are their conversations very short and curt, or do you mm-hmm. feel like when you ask ask a question that they genuinely mm-hmm. open up a little bit more because you are mm-hmm. of the same gender? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean for me personally, like I've definitely have an easier time talking to like other women than men or like like even like other gay women because there is a sort of understanding when you're like a little bit different from most people Mm -hmm. in that sense but yeah it does depend on the person again like sometimes you know you like i guess like with any kind of person sometimes you like start one conversation and it just flows and you can talk for like five hours and sometimes it's you know hey how are you i'm fine and you okay what are you doing just chilling oh yeah me too like i mean it really like it really depends like especially like i don't know i try to like if someone has like in their profile like oh you know i like games and anime then i would usually guess oh you know what kind of games and anime do you like maybe we can find a connection that way but if there's like nothing there (laughs) or if like they don't say anything then it's just like yeah like like, I can try, but I'm not that good at it. So I guess at some point it's like, okay, I have nothing to say. Sorry. No, I, I got you. I had, I had something very similar mm-hmm. where a gal was like, I love, mm-hmm. she's like, what's most important in a relationship is communication mm-hmm. and effort. And she's like, if you take days mm-hmm. to respond, you know, I unmatch. And like, I send her a couple mm-hmm. messages trying to get her to open up. And a lot of her, an- mm-hmm. and her answers were just very meh. Like, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, why do you teach? And she's like, oh, I love kids, and I I want to make a, I want to make a, you know, I want to make a change in the future. Mm-hmm. Cool, that's like Miss America answer. I I need something with a little <laughs> more, like I need something a little more, more depth. I'm like, hey, because mm-hmm. uh, she was like, oh, what's your favorite go to uh, uh, comfort food? And mm-hmm. I gave her like, I'm a talker, as you can tell. I mm-hmm. have a fucking yeah. podcast. But she's mm-hmm. like pizza. I was like, oh, what kind of pizza are we talking about here? Because like, fuck, I'll make some crazy mm-hmm. ass pizzas. You know, Mm -hmm. and she's like, and I I threw it a bunch and she's just like taco pizza. Mac and cheese sounds yummy. And it's like, where the fuck do I go with this conversation? You know? It doesn't like such generic answers. Like, like, my my friend once said something like some people in life are just NPCs. And that's kind of how I feel in those cases. Like, yeah, I mean, I'm sorry, you're just an NPC. Like, and I just gave the same answer as everyone else. Like, what am I supposed to do with this? Thank you for the interaction. I'm done Mm -hmm. now. You know, like I've, are we, yeah. are we done with the generic dialogue? Fuck. What, uh, yeah. I'm curious now, what are your, mm-hmm. what are your worst horror stories with somebody you've matched on, uh, both, uh, from both sides? If, mm-hmm. if you've got a good horror story. Horror stories. I mean, I guess like, mm-hmm. well, I, I can give you an example if you would like, mm-hmm. I went on a Tinder I mean, date I, <laughs> and I, yeah. I put my hand around her and she, she's mm-hmm. like, Hey, no, take your hand off. I was like, Oh, I'm sorry. Did I make a move too quick? And she's like, no, it, it feels like the devil's touching me. I was like, all right. All right. I'm going to go home okay. now. Yeah. No, that, dead serious. That That's a statement. I mean, and then as okay. I was walking out the door, mm-hmm. getting my shoes mm-hmm. on, her pregnant mm-hmm. roommate was sitting on the couch and she's like, Oh, you should hook up with my roommate. I was like, she's pregnant. <laughs> what? And she's like, yeah, well, I what? mean, that's a positive, right? I was like, not really, no. And she's like, yeah, but her that's... boyfriend's a douchebag. And her roommate but... heard everything she just said. So I was like, I'm going to go now. <laughs> yeah, no, that's 
that's no save yourself from that yeah i guess like the like i guess it's not that bad but like the very like the first time when i actually matched with a guy and we were agreeing to meet like i've never met anyone from any app before and like we talked for like a couple of weeks like he was also into anime we talked a little bit he seemed like a very nice guy and then we were like yeah you know let's meet up here and here i'm there on the day and he doesn't show up and then i wait like you know 10 minutes he doesn't show up but then i'm like writing him like hey you know are you on your way still doesn't show up after like half an hour i'm like okay fuck this like i'm not bothering okay went back home the next day he texts me again he doesn't apologize he doesn't say anything he doesn't explain himself instead he writes hey you know this is like really spontaneous but do you want to go to germany with me tomorrow and i'm like i would have been abducted if i said yes like yeah. i don't I, like <laughs> And I was like, dude, what the, the fuck? fuck? Like, I mean, no. you go to Germany for groceries, but you're not going to go to Germany with some random yeah. dude. That's I mean, I was like weird. living with my parents back then. So that's like, you know, oh. that was further away. And like, again, it's just like, like the, it would have been like, a, you know, I don't know, maybe like six, seven hour trip by car. And like, Jesus. I don't want to know what that guy would have done in that time. Good Lord. <laughs> or just like. Again, you know, you 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 stand me up, and then you you don't even like apologize or explain yourself. Just like, hey, you know, want to go on a like road trip with me? And I'm like, well, no, that not grinds, after that. That grinds my motherfucker. That grinds my gears so much. Yeah. When I'm just like, when you're expecting to do something with somebody, mm -hmm. and they just mm -hmm. don't text you, like that enrages me more mm -hmm. than anything in the yeah. world. I just it mm -hmm. it it mm -hmm. irks my chain. I hate mm. that with a passion. I mean, I mean, again, like, uh, like maybe there was an emergency. Like, I couldn't yeah. understand if the next day he said, like, hey, you know, I'm really sorry. Like, mm, I don't know, family emergency or whatever. I couldn't come. Like, I can understand that. But if you don't even explain yourself when we were supposed to meet and you're just like, hey, you know, let's go on a road trip together. Then I'm like, what? No. I mean, like, no. I'm, yeah, <laughs> you're 100% you're right. If something happens and you're not able to text me, no, mm -hmm. I got it. But depending mm -hmm. upon the scenario that some people mm -hmm. have used as excuses about things, no, that's not like you, you could find 10 minutes to be like, hey, sorry, something mm -hmm. came up. And it's like, okay, mm -hmm. cool. You know, it takes, what, 10, 15 seconds to send that text message, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Some people just didn't consider it. <sighs> you, know, I, you know, I had that like with my ex at some point where, like, basically, like, at the end of our relationship, we weren't even really talking, and I was, like, trying to text her, like, hey, you know, can we talk about something? And I saw, like, on WhatsApp that she, like, saw the message, and she didn't reply for a couple of hours, and I was like, um, hey, like, could we talk? And she was like, oh, yo, hey, sorry, I'm at a concert right now, because she was a musician, so I was mm -hmm. like, okay, she has a concert, and she said she'll text me, like, later or tomorrow, and, you know, fine. I get a text three days later. And at that point, I was also like, okay, I I'm done. Sorry, like, <laughs> just no. <laughs> uh, who's who's worse to date, men or women, from your perspective? Mm -hmm. I mean, I've never really been, like, in a relationship relationship with a guy, so I can't really compare that. When you say relationship I mean, relationship, are we talking, like, you've... I mean, like... I mean, like, I've never officially dated a guy, but, um, you know, I've sometimes, you know, sometimes you have, like, you've experimented. something coming up, like, experimented, or, yeah. or, like, at some point, you know, I had this, like, a thing with a guy, and we met up, and we really vibe, but then, you know, he was going abroad in a month, and we were <sighs> like, okay, we're both, we're both not into long distance, so we didn't, yeah. like, make it official or anything, but I think it was fine, it was fun. <laughs> No, okay. Um, no, I was, I was just kind of curious. I, I, I because mm -hmm. like I always find it interesting hearing mm -hmm. from like women who have dated other women mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. they've dated men. It's like okay, what's worse? Mm -hmm. You know, like let's. I, I, I mean, want. I want the. I want the dirt. You know, like I like it because you you read those stories I mean, online. I mean, it really. Like I'm not the most experienced person out there. Mm -hmm. Like for me, I could. I, there's not like a definite difference like it's like at the end it does come about come down to the individual person and personality but i guess like in this kind of like pre-dating stages i find it a lot easier with women mm -hmm. just because like it's kind of i don't know again maybe it's like my preference for women as a whole but it's just kind of easier and like i guess more fun for me whereas like with men it's i feel like in general like in straight relationships there's just a lot more kind of like oh you know 
it's this other gender. What do I do? What can I say? Da, da, da. <laughs> like for both sides. And whereas with women, it's like, okay, we kind of you, like, you there know is what this, to talk the, about. Yeah. Like, you don't know what to talk about or like, I don't know, even just like casual, like I can say like a compliment to my female friend or like be like, oh, you know, your hair is really nice today. And you know, if we're like, you know, just friends, that's, you know, perfectly nice compliment. And if there's something more, it's like, oh, you know, it's just maybe a little flirty. I can't really say that to a guy that I just want to be friends with, usually, because... Because that may be the first compliment they've heard in a month, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I mean, that or, like, there is, like, a tendency that even if you don't really, like, compliment a guy, a lot of guys will think that, oh, a woman is generally nice to me, which means that's definitely love, and it's, like, like some guys are lonely i understand that like it happens but at some point like i've heard recently a story from my friend and she met this guy like in a game and they were just kind of talking and she was really not interested and like never showed any interest but this guy was apparently like super crushing on her and being like hey do you want to meet up or like i've never met a girl like you before who's also into games like oh my god and it's like it's it's he, like, it's rare it's mm -hmm. it, it's it's sad to say but there was a there was a girl that i used to play insurgency sandstorm with you know mm -hmm. and like she was just she was like a dude you know mm -hmm. she'd hung out mm -hmm. played video games you know like i'd, I'd mm -hmm. be like hey you're playing you mind if mm -hmm. you want to team up and mm -hmm. she'd be like yeah sure and it's just like mm -hmm. girls don't do that it, you know like i i mean i don't yeah i mean depends yeah. if you're nice to me i'm like mm -hmm. why are you being nice to me i don't <laughs> understand like you know it just it's weird because a lot mm -hmm. of the social interaction that mm -hmm. that I that I can get from as a mm -hmm. male, like it, like mm -hmm. when I go through drive-throughs, I have to remind myself mm -hmm. they are told to smile and be happy at the drive-throughs, because <laughs> it's just weird. Because like mm -hmm. when a woman is usually nice to me, that's when I usually start mm -hmm. dating her. You know, like mm -hmm. when I went out with one of my ex-girlfriends, you know, she kind of gave me a little bit of a nudge on her first walk, and mm -hmm. I was like, mm -hmm. that means she likes me. You know, she would smile, she would giggle the whole time, mm -hmm. and then I'd make a, I'd make a, a joke, and she'd giggle, and mm -hmm. she'd think that's funny. Well, when I make a giggle at the drive-thru and I make the drive-thru girl giggle, <laughs> my man brain is like, hey, you know, because that's all I ever know. You know, if I'm like talking mm -hmm. to some other girl and she's kind of a friend or she's not really interested, mm -hmm. there's just, you know, it's just a uh, resting mm -hmm. bitch face okay. or something like that. You know, it's just, mm -hmm. you don't get that same reaction. So it's, it's really weird mm -hmm. because I mean, you're right. Like, dude, I tell my homies, mm -hmm. I love them all the damn time, mm -hmm. you know, but like how many other people tell them, you know, like my buddy, Brandon, mm -hmm. his wife tells him he loves him. Who outside of that is going to tell him that he loves him? Yeah, I think yeah. it's kind of like sad when I hear about like because like even just like with female friendship, like it's a, there's a lot of like support and you know like you know I love you or like you just like you can like again if I'm like you know like being super depressed or crying about exams, like I can just go to like my female friends and just like cry on their shoulder and they'd be like, yeah, you know it's okay, it's fine, you're gonna do great, you know you're smart, you're you're lovely, everything. And I feel like from what I've heard, guys don't really have that usually, or there's like, I mean, again, if, like if I just, like, if, or again, if, I can just kind of like, sorry. <laughs> no, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Apologize. I mean, like, no, I mean, like, 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 like in like female friendships, like, again, you can't say like a lot of these things like, oh my God, you're so pretty today. I love your makeup or like, you look really nice or like things like that. And I don't know, maybe like between men, it's more like if you tell a guy that his hair looks nice, maybe that's considered kind of gay, which is. It, it's, it's not or really gay like <laughs> but it's like bro shaved your head looking clean man and you're like thanks mm -hmm. boss love you homie and he's mm -hmm. like, love you too man you know and okay. it, it's that vibe but like mm -hmm. if a girl came over and cried on my shoulder about something mm -hmm. my body mm -hmm. is going to physically mm -hmm. react in a different way because when a woman is that close to me that mm -hmm. usually has a different connotation I don't mm -hmm. my guy friends will come over or like or I'll go over to my guy friends and be like dude I'm having mm -hmm. a bad fucking day well that sucks mm -hmm. homie what's wrong and then we'll talk about it but mm -hmm. he's on that end of the couch. I'm on this end of the couch, you know, and then at the end of the, you know, after it's like, yeah, that sucks. That sucks. Hey, you want to go mm -hmm. kill people in Call of Duty? Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> you know, like that's, that's how it kind of works. Yeah. But like if a girl, mm -hmm. you know, like, yeah, a girl can cry on another girl's mm -hmm. shoulder because mm -hmm. I mean, that's, you got, you're more comfortable with doing something like that. Like, mm -hmm. dude, I'll cry on a homie's shoulder. Hell yeah. But like mm -hmm. at the same time, it's a little different. Mm -hmm. You know, you, mm -hmm. you, yeah. you bring in two different genders and things are going to get weird just it, yeah it just, there's always like like it, there, it shouldn't be that way like in my opinion like ideally it shouldn't really matter but like obviously it does like yeah. i also i would feel a lot more like comfortable being like close with a female friend like very casually than with a guy friend or like 
I don't know, at some point, like, I did go, like, on a holiday with, like, a guy friend, and we were, you know, perfectly chill, and then at some point he kisses me, and I'm like, ah, aha, okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, think about it, though, like, it's... I mean, I wasn't, like, fully against it, like, I didn't, yeah. like, I wasn't interested in him before, but I also, I'm like, okay, you know, might as well, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> was it a fun was, adventure, you know... is my question. It was fun, you know, okay. he was, he's again, like, we've known each other for, like, a couple of years. Yeah. It was a little weird because he's the ex of my best friend, but she was chill with it, so. <laughs> well, I, it's, that's a whole other topic that I don't want to that's touch. A whole, I mean, again, she was chill with it, like, it was fine, <laughs> mm -hmm. but that was also, like, like, I felt it, like, even though I've only really seen him as a friend and it was, was like, I wasn't, like, romantically interested, interested in him mm -hmm. either, like, it was definitely a very different dynamic than... With like a female friend yeah it's it's mm -hmm. just weird because you know mm -hmm. like you put this time and effort into somebody mm -hmm. as a male into like a female mm -hmm. and it's just like there's mm -hmm. an intimate i guess it's weird because there's an intimacy mm -hmm. that you feel mm -hmm. like if you're with a female friend mm -hmm. and you, you've got a, mm -hmm. like i don't know if you've ever had a female friend and you had a crush on mm -hmm. them and you were like doing mm -hmm. kind of things with them it kind of just mm -hmm. you know was there ever that bubbly mm -hmm. where you're like hey maybe i should you know a sneak yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah definitely yeah definitely. that's what it's like you know like because mm -hmm. I'm not like I've got I've I really mm -hmm. probably even can't say I have a female mm -hmm. friend but like mm -hmm. if I'm taking a girl out to do something it's because I'm mm -hmm. interested I don't mm -hmm. like I don't need to look at something pretty all the time and be like mm -hmm. can't ever have that you know <laughs> it's like it's like mm -hmm. if I if I kept going to the Jaguar dealership I can't mm -hmm. own a Jaguar I think they are gorgeous cars mm -hmm. but if I can't have a Jaguar why would I constantly go to the Jaguar <laughs> shop you know it's mm -hmm. just it's weird it's it's dumb yeah. I know it's so dumb but still I mean, I can kind of get it, like, and I guess, like, that does make it hard because there's this kind of, like, complex where, again, if I'm, like, maybe, like, extreme case, I'm cuddling, like, on the bed with a female friend, there is a certain degree of, like, plausible deniability <laughs> <laughs> that, that, oh, no, we're just being, like, just, you know, girls being girls, like, this is just fun and games if she isn't interested. No, Whereas, this like, isn't guys, tickling my fancy. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Yeah, or like you can have this kind of intimacy with like a female friend and it's like, you know, it can be just friends, like that's perfectly fine. Whereas I guess like, you know, a guy with a girl or like even like between gay men, I feel like there's, I mean, I don't know game, I'm not a gay man and I haven't talked to that many, but I feel like, you know, maybe you don't usually cuddle with your homies and be like, <laughs> this is perfectly, you know, normal and heterosexual. <laughs> Well, I mean, like, I've, you know, uh, I mean, when I was... When depends I was, on the people, yeah. but from what I've heard from, like, my brother or, like, other friends, it's, like, it's very, you know, we're bros, but, you know... Yeah, if, if I'm on this end of the couch, homie's over mm -hmm. there, so, yeah. Yeah, no. yeah, pretty much. I don't, uh, I don't, it just, like, mm -hmm. I mean, I've cuddled with men before, but mm -hmm. that's because mm -hmm. I was forced to on a very cramped <laughs> airplane in the military, you know? Yeah. You get really comfortable really fast. Mm -hmm. I, I will say that is mm -hmm. one thing about the military, is that I... Mm -hmm. I slept on another dude's shoulder. I had no problems with mm -hmm. it. You know, I just kind of leaned over because, mm -hmm. I mean, you're sitting on it. I know the people who are listening to the podcast can't mm -hmm. see it, but basically your your feet are tucked in real hardcore. Literally, mm -hmm. a guy's rubbing on my right shoulder and my left shoulder. And I just kind of leaned one way. I was like, I'm going for it, man. And I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And I just slept on his shoulder. And then it was mm -hmm. cute because he, he leaned his head over onto mine and it was like we Aww. were pillows for each other. Yeah. But, you know, cute. yeah. Here? No. Mm -hmm. No. Not even close. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and now when I have okay, like I mean, for what I understand, most men wouldn't have that kind of, like, experience or, like, most yeah. men maybe wouldn't feel comfortable with that, which, again, is kind of sad. Like, sometimes you just want to cuddle your homies. Like Sometimes I need a <laughs> fucking know. hug. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty, like, some, all of us sometimes need a fucking hug. It shouldn't yeah. be weird, but... Like, oh, my God. Okay. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we're going to move on to the advice section because mm -hmm. apparently Ooh. we're agreeing on, like, everything <laughs> here. Not that I don't, like, agree nice. on everything, but we got we to gotta switch it up. Mm -hmm. And um, Yeah, of course. Uh, so I, I've again I've moved around my house for people that are watching mm -hmm. the video podcast. Uh, like mm -hmm. every time I have every time I do a podcast, like I literally shift my apartment around. And mm -hmm. the problem is the sun is coming in this way. My second monitor is my giant TV, and it's really hard to see. So mm -hmm. I apologize. Um, I got a couple tabs open here, and mm -hmm. uh, a, a common shame is asking mm -hmm. us here. I need advice mm -hmm. for a school fight. Uh, he's Ooh. in middle school. There's a kid who is taller mm -hmm. and stronger than me, always hitting me, punching me, and choking me. 
I've been thinking of fighting back since the teachers don't do anything about it. So what should I do? Sorry for the bad English. So apparently he might be somewhere else too, which I think okay. is hilarious. They're like, sorry for the bad English. It's like, dude, your grammar is better than mine. It, it's always like the, the people with perfect grammar who say sorry for the bad English. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so how would you help mm. out common shame here with it, with his bully problem? That's difficult because like you said that like the teachers didn't do anything. Mm-hmm. I mean, a part of me wants to say like, okay, maybe don't escalate it. Maybe like talk to your parents and see if they can do anything. And a part of me is like, sometimes bullies do just need a punch in the face. But <laughs> love it. I, again, I, I I don't know if that would kind of if they would like beat him up even more. And like, mm. I don't want him to get hurt, obviously. So um, yeah, <laughs> that's difficult, I guess. I don't know. Well, you know, the, the weird thing is, mm. uh, common shame mm. never announced mm. what gender they are or what gender. Okay. The oh yeah, is. midday. I apologize. Well, no, it, it's you know we <laughs> always midday, assume yeah. it's a guy picking on another guy yeah. here. Um, I like, mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't. Like, so maybe it's mm. it's a female picking mm. on a dude or a female picking on a female. What would you, mm -hmm. uh, what would your counter advice to that be if the bully was a woman? In, in that sense. I mean. <laughs> I, I do think like if like uh, even if a, a woman is like literally harassing you, you can't punch her. Like maybe that will have consequences. But you know, <laughs> I can understand that it will look bad and might not like you know. Some of them do deserve it. Like I definitely yeah. think that. But I can understand if you're a guy punching a girl, that's gonna get taken badly. Like regardless of the situation. <laughs> I uh. Um. Oh, I'm sorry. Was there more to that? My apologies. <laughs> Hmm? No, I'm done. Uh, okay. oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I try to find the natural the natural mm -hmm. end to a sentence, and, and I, mm -hmm. I I snipe for it. Mm -hmm. I apologize. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, it's fine. If if if, if this was mm -hmm. do it undo violence, three things: mm -hmm. kick him in the dick, mm -hmm. ch chins are very very weak, or sucker mm -hmm. punch the hell out of the dude. You know, just come mm -hmm. up from behind him and just go for the temple. Um, mm -hmm. well, okay, don't go for the temple. Go for the cheek, because you can kill somebody if you mm -hmm. hit him in the temple. Um, you know the the I one. Mean... <laughs> <laughs> like, you, you know, you're right. Escalation is, is pro. You don't really want to I do mean... it, but obviously, if the teachers don't give a, f if they don't care, mm -hmm. dude, yeah. come up from behind, lift that foot right mm -hmm. where the sun don't shine, and end his existence. Mm -hmm. You know, just. I mean, I guess like I mean, assuming I don't know, it's like a very like small scr scrawny person going mm -hmm. gets like like a six foot five buff guy maybe that won't end that well and in that case i might be more cautious but again like, yeah, we you, don't know that enough information i guess if you kick them hard enough they mm -hmm. will drop you know Fair, if, if yeah. I, mm -hmm. I can tell you i've bumped the boys in this mm -hmm. i've bumped mm -hmm. the boys mm -hmm. on some stuff mm -hmm. not very just like a light little <laughs> meh and even then it's just like who all right, let's take a breather yeah, here. Yeah. Two seconds. <laughs> you know, even just mm -hmm. even the slightest little tap on the fellas. But like you, you mm -hmm. soccer yeah. kick this crap. Mm -hmm. Dude's gonna yeah, have then, to. Yeah. Okay, that's um, fair. If it's a woman, don't mm -hmm. care if you're a guy or girl. Slap her. Mm -hmm. Just open hand right across the cheek. Uh, two, one of two things is gonna happen. Mm -hmm. She is going to end your existence, <laughs> or she will be so weirded out that you slapped her. Mm -hmm. You just walk away. You know. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah, could be. Uh, it's it's just uh, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. I uh, mm -hmm. like I uh, mm -hmm. if you're gonna do something, do it with do it with the violence of actions. Because um, you know if mm -hmm. nobody's helping you out here, sometimes you just yeah, gotta take life in your own hands. Yeah, so. I mean if really there's like no like adult figure like helping out, then yeah, sometimes mm -hmm. you just gotta like. And then when you get in trouble, just be like, yeah, cool, whatever. You know, take your punishment. It <laughs> comes with the territory. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I was gonna say something. Oh yeah, to the it, it might not end mm -hmm. well to your statement. Um, when somebody fights back or somebody mm -hmm. comes back with a good retort or something mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. usually that earns the bully's respect. You know, to some degree mm -hmm. where you push back. Like if you're just taking it, dude, mm -hmm. don't just take it. Like give them their shit back. Like yeah. I remember there was a kid mm -hmm. when I lived in Texas who would give me mm -hmm. shit all the time, and then finally he mm -hmm. like he threw a wad of paper at me or something like that. Mm -hmm. I was like, hey, you forgot this, and I tossed it back and I hit him like right in between the eyes. <laughs> And because he didn't think I'd throw it back at him mm -hmm. from that day on, he never messed with me again. He was, he like, mm -hmm. he would still do the typical asshole things, but he never went to that degree that he was going mm -hmm. before. Cause it was just kind of inching mm -hmm. up. But when I showed him, I was like, mm -hmm. I'll play this fucking game too. Whether or not I could mm -hmm. take him was a totally different story. Cause mm -hmm. he would have he would have destroyed me, mm -hmm. but yeah. you know, you, you give it, you give it back to him mm -hmm. and they'll respect you for it mm -hmm. to some degree. Yeah, that's true. I mean, like a lot of the time people, like when I was in school have told me like, Hey, yeah, you know, 
don't give the bullies a reaction they'll get bored of you but that doesn't work nah. a lot of the time that doesn't work sadly like yeah. sometimes you do have to just kind of like clap back like <laughs> one way or another <laughs> All right, so we got uh, mm-hmm. Sufficient School 80. Mm-hmm. I'm wondering if that is their age. Um, mm-hmm. Nope, never mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, so my son, who is 19, is refusing mm-hmm. the COVID vaccine. Is he being selfish? My wife and I have both gotten the COVID mm-hmm. jab. We are both hitting 50 and think this is a sem- sensible thing to do. My mm-hmm. son, however, thinks it's dangerous and unnecessary, and he is adamantly refusing to get it. He lives with us and is attending university online. My wife and I tried convincing mm-hmm. him uh, dozens of times to get the vaccine, but he's de- it's a dead end. Apparently, he's deep into conspiracy theories, uh, you know, and, he, and it thinks that might be why. His mom, who lives with him, is 82 and vulnerable, but she is fully vaccinated too. Um, mm-hmm. I think he's being selfish and wrong. What should I do to respect... Uh, what should I... And should I just respect the right to do with his body and what he wants? I worded that weird, but I think it's worded too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, think, I mean, I guess what where they're coming from. Yeah. yeah, I think he is being selfish, but mm-hmm. am I wrong to think that? And should I respect the right to do? Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. there's a statement. Mm-hmm. So, what do you got for sufficient school here? I mean, the conspiracy theories do sound like a real problem. Like, in the end, you probably can't force him to get the vaccine one way or another. But like, if there's like, I think you should probably get to the root of the issue and ask, like, why does he think that? Or, like, who told him that is dangerous? And mm-hmm. I don't know if like, he really refuses and you think that like, it could be dangerous for, like, you know, you or, like, the 82-year-old grandmother, then, I don't know, maybe tell him, okay, if he doesn't want to get vaccinated, he should get, like, tested every t- two days. And if he isn't, then maybe... Like, sometimes you just kind of have to be harsh and be like, okay, if you had test, like, positive or if you don't want to get tested, then, you know, you can't live with us or, you know, just go go, go somewhere. I don't know. Hallelujah. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, because I, I find that, especially right now in Switzerland, they kind of had, like, free tests, like, up to free tests a month, basically. But now mm. they said that after November, they w- they w- won't be free anymore. You have to pay for them. And suddenly people now want to get vaccinated. <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> so again, if you can kind of like, I mean, either, you know, like if you have like the time and if he's like more receptive to it, maybe say like, you know, why does he think that? And like maybe address the conspiracy theories and maybe try to undo that. And if not, then, you know, either he gets tested, like, I don't know, every two days or something or... You know, he can find another place to live. Yeah, the, um, the, mm-hmm. my buddy Bre- Alex, uh, mm-hmm. Alex brought up an, an amazing theory, or, or not a, an amazing theory, mm-hmm. but a. Uh, mm-hmm. It's called the backfire effect, mm-hmm. where if you are so at, if somebody is very adamant, or they don't mm-hmm. want to hear any details, uh, if they don't want to, mm-hmm. if they don't want to change their mind. I can, mm-hmm. you know, I can be like, Anna, look, dating men is a thousand times better. I hear all the <laughs> reasons why, but you're like, yeah, but Katy Perry's hot. And I don't care, <laughs> you know, like I could yeah. literally lay out all of the great mm-hmm. things that there are, but you're mm-hmm. so adamant about this one thing that mm-hmm. the more facts I spew, the harder your stance mm-hmm. is that Katy Perry is going to be yeah, the yeah, best person. Definitely. Yeah. And I think you're spot on. Mm-hmm. You'd be like, listen, mm-hmm. you can live with us, but you're going to get vaccinated. You live under my house, my rules. Mm-hmm. If you don't want to live under my house and my rules and you want to be unvaccinated, you got two weeks, you know, yeah. Yeah. You, how old is this guy? 19, 19. Like- yeah, I mean, at that point, like, he isn't a doll. Like, if he wants to, you know, do that with his body or not get the vaccine, that is his choice. But it's also your choice to, you know, prioritize yourself and, you know, not endanger your own health or, like, the health of your own mother, right? If she's, like, 82 and vulnerable, then you also can't put that on her just because your kid is being a little asshole. Did I just hear a siren? Yeah, yeah, that was outside my window. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, 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 no. That was all. I love mm-hmm. that. I love it. I love mm-hmm. it. I love. I love the sirens over. I, I love mm-hmm. watching the. Uh, I got. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was it? I think it was like it was like some mm-hmm. uh, some random like TV show that was like in mm-hmm. the UK. You know these these dudes and gals were whatever like murder documentary <laughs> or a cop documentary, and I just hear the. I was like, oh, it's so much better than our dumb sirens here. Oh. Yeah. Are there like different siren sounds? Oh, oh, yeah. Just look up like, cops. Just look up cops yeah. and you hear the different. I guess that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> but maybe we should look that up later to compare. It it it's just mm-hmm. I don't know. Like 
Because mm-hmm. you ever have something and like you have something in your country and just it's one way mm-hmm. and then you go somewhere else mm-hmm. and it's totally different. Like mm-hmm. my dad had a uh, he made a dish called goulash, and where mm-hmm. I live, goulash mm-hmm. is uh, meatballs made with hamburger, rice, and then cream of mushroom soup. Right. What are you doing for goulash? Oh, yeah, goulash. see, that's not goulash. Uh-huh. <laughs> that's what my dad called goulash. Maybe it was just his. Uh, I didn't really realize how broke mm-hmm. my dad was when we were younger because mm-hmm. just mm. life did its thing. But like maybe that was his way of making a very cheap dish that fed the family. You know, yeah. it was tasty yeah, as mean, fuck. I mean, that, I mean, if it tastes good, yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah. you know, whatever you need to do to feed the family or like. I also bastardized like certain like pasta dishes where Italians would say like, you can't put cream on a carbonara. What are you doing? And I'm like, I mean, I have it. It tastes good. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. See, you add this. That's blasphemy. Yeah, but it try it. It tastes good. You know? Mm. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. All right. So uh, mm-hmm. probably not a frog mm-hmm. is asking us mm-hmm. here. Um, I, a 20 year old female, have been a doc, have not been to a doctor in 12 years because my parents are anti-vaxxers anti-vaxxers they believe Oof. that the doc you know they believe the doctors don't have the best interests mm-hmm. in mind and only want to diagnose mm-hmm. us with fake diseases and then keep you sick so they can take your money this has created a ton of anxiety mm-hmm. around surrounding doctors in my mind but i finally moved out and i want to have a checkup i have insurance and i have had it the whole time my mom said it's for emergencies only i have no idea to where to start i barely know how to set up an appointment uh so how is probably not a frog gonna get our assistance honestly i felt that because i do get a lot of like appointment and like phone anxiety so i can definitely feel that it's difficult <laughs> um I mean, well, I guess like. Thank you for coming I mean, on the, the show. If you have that much anxiety about phone calls, so I appreciate it. I mean, this is a lot easier than phone calls because <laughs> I can kind of see you. Maybe we have like you know more personal conversation. But if I need to like again make a doctor's appointment, it's like hi, my name is da da da. And <laughs> I mean, I guess like going to the advice like most of these people don't care that much. Like they get you know twenty phone calls a day. They won't remember like if you stutter once or twice. Like. It happens. They've probably had a lot worse with like rude customers and stuff. I don't know. Depends on like maybe like doctor or insurance situation in the US. Maybe you can chime in with that. But if you just want to like call a call and make an appointment, you can make, you know, a little list and be like, just write down literally what you're going to say. Like, hi, my name is this and that. I would like to get a checkup. When are you available? You know, things like that. Yeah. Um, like just be as prepared as you can be and again just remember most of these people probably don't really care it will be over in five minutes and you will be really really glad that you did it because i think especially in that situation i think a checkup should be like in order um so yeah i mean good luck to probably not a frog (laughs) was it yeah probably not Uh, a frog yeah i mean just yeah (laughs) I, yeah, I, you know, and that's that's what I love about these people is that you, I don't know where they are. You know, are you are you in Iraq? Are you in Europe? Are you in you know the UK? Are you in? Yeah. Where are you? Um, mm-hmm. Probably, if they're anti-vaxxers, I would probably say it's coming from America. Just given the whole, you know, there's like I, I like yeah. like I also assumed probably yeah. US like. <laughs> Yeah, and it's it's so funny because like I, I wonder if people mm-hmm. do that too, where it's oh, like, like that, you know, that you, insurance is like yeah. an issue in the, in the U.S. where it might not be in other places. But, well, like, yeah. do you ever go on Reddit and you're like, oh, mm-hmm. this is you know, like, yeah, this person's mm-hmm. also in Sweden or whatever, you know, or like switch, mm-hmm. like, do you do you do mm-hmm. that where you find yourself mm-hmm. constantly having to remind yourself, mm-hmm. oh, this person probably isn't where I live because this is the fucking mm-hmm. internet. <laughs> so I mean, I mean, I mean, I guess like it's a, a very <laughs> American thing because I am actively aware how American the internet is a lot of the time <laughs> and you know some people would say like I don't know there's like the, the there was this hard whole thing that I recently saw where someone's like yeah like I don't know Biden is not my president and the person replied Duh, but he won the election how dare you evil Republican and they're like I'm in Sweden <laughs> <laughs> he's literally not my president oh I love that crap I love that uh, yeah, but but for probably not a frog mm-hmm. here. Um, mm-hmm. To be completely mm-hmm. honest with you, uh, mm-hmm. just like if you're that if you're if you have that mm-hmm. much anxiety, because um, mm-hmm. one of my ex girlfriends used to have that much anxiety mm-hmm. about this kind of stuff, I would literally mm-hmm. just do I, I would I would do what I tell her. 
take mm-hmm. a day to just recharge that social battery that you have mm-hmm. and then uh, get a notepad get a pen or pencil mm-hmm. and you're gonna make two phone calls your first phone call is going to be to your insurance company ask your insurance company mm-hmm. what is my deductible you know where can i go what doctors are in network da 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 you know like mm-hmm. and and be upfront and honest with everybody that you talk to be like hey i need to get a check for, for an std i just need a routine checkup i need this i need that so that mm-hmm. way you can understand what the cost is going to be to you towards the end of it because mm-hmm. you know if your insurance is like what i have through the the veterans mm-hmm. association i pay for my pills and that's it. You know, like if they prescribe mm-hmm. me something and my pills are heavily discounted, you know, what might cost you 20 mm-hmm. bucks cost me like two for mm-hmm. an entire bottle. So like, you know, just kind of know what you're getting yourself into with the insurance company, then call mm-hmm. the doctor that's in network and be completely honest with them. Um, mm-hmm. They don't care. I can tell you firsthand, mm-hmm. they don't give a fuck. I had an STD mm-hmm. scare once. Mm-hmm. I was open. I was honest. I was embarrassed. The doctor mm-hmm. thought it was hilarious. She told me I was <laughs> fine. Everything was mm-hmm. good to go. And, you know, the the more open and honest you are with everybody in mm-hmm. these scenarios, the more likely it is that you're going to mm-hmm. get good information as well as the yeah. kind of information that you want. Yeah, that's really true. I mean... Like, again, I study, like, pharmaceutical science, and we get a lot of, like, stuff for, like, if you want to work in a pharmacy or if you want to work in a medical field in the future, it's really, really important that patients are honest. Like, you know, if you're hiding information because you think it's embarrassing or people will think, well, weird, like, so much weird shit happens with, like, your body and medical stuff. This is not the worst that this person is ever going to see. And they don't care. They've probably seen it, like, dozens of times before, and you just say, like, hey... Like, just be honest, like, hey, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I want a routine checkup, then they will walk you through it, you know. Like, yeah. They're there to help you. So, you know, make it as easy for them as well so they know what to look out for and maybe, like, what your problems could be potentially in that situation. Oh, yeah. Because, like, mm-hmm. when I went in for the STD check, it, mm-hmm. it was it, – because it was from my ex-wife, it was kind of funny because, like, I was, like, private. And the, the, <laughs> the, the nurse there is like, honey, I heard it all. I was like <laughs> – my ex-wife yeah. said I might have this. And she's like, that's probably why she's your ex-wife, but we'll get you checked out. <laughs> I was like, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Killer Queen is asking mm-hmm. us here, uh, forced to volunteer. I hate everything mm-hmm. about it. All they want to do is make it hell to have me. Any good tips to do that without getting in trouble? I will appreciate any other input, though. Wait, what, what are they volunteering with? Doesn't say. Or- I okay. don't actually I don't think it says mm. oh Wait, shit. Okay. Mm. Oh banana fucking sandwich. I can't <laughs> see. Okay. Mm. Uh let's see if I can expand this. Uh cuz sometimes they give good information but sometimes they don't cuz the information mm. is horrible. So it's a university thing that she's being forced to go to. She, uh, that's what I can gather thus far. Um, yeah, no other information other than she's probably being forced to do something for her university for either the, uh, course that she is attending, or maybe it's a fraternity Mm -hmm. or something kind of like one of those, like, Hey, all the Mm -hmm. new students got to come here for the orientation Mm -hmm. day or something, something weird. Um, yeah, so how would you, so just kind of like, let's just say in general, she's being forced to volunteer for something that she doesn't want to volunteer for, um, that she could potentially get out of. What What would your advice be to Killer Queen? I mean, like the most basic thing is fake an emergency or fake an illness. Like just, like if you can afford to do that, like depending on what the situation is, just be like, hey really sorry like i have a sore throat today and i want to be careful with like covid and stuff maybe it's better that i don't come and i see most people would probably be like you know understanding of that Mm -hmm. like if you really want to just get out of it you know shit happens and otherwise if you need to go there like i mean if it's like a volunteer thing for university it's probably for a day you know maybe find one or two other people who also don't really want to be there unless you can make it less awful for yourself if you really have to go but yeah it, it's so hard because mm-hmm. like i really want to know like what it is that she's being forced mm-hmm. to do yeah. is this part of your program mm-hmm. is this you know part of right. like you know your fraternity that you joined mm-hmm. 
Because, I mean, if it's part of your program... Volunteer, Mm -hmm. like, if it's volunteer work, it's probably not, like, super mandatory, but... It's yeah. from the sound when when someone says they're being forced to volunteer, mm-hmm. it sounds like it's a mandatory volunteer thing. So I'm kind of like it sounds believe. like yeah. I mean, it could be like I don't know social pressure to do that or like something like that. It could be yeah. yeah. Like if it's for your program, mm-hmm. suck it up, Buttercup. Mm-hmm. You know that's all I gotta say. Yeah. If it, like, yeah. Again, if it's for a program and you actually really need to be there, then you just you gotta be there. Like it sucks. Yeah. Like. Every program will have stuff that you don't like to do, but you got to do it. But if it's something else, if it's something totally just, Mm -hmm. you know, if it's, if it Mm -hmm. is truly something that is just voluntary and that you Mm -hmm. don't really need to do, Mm -hmm. show up, Mm -hmm. find a place to hide and fuck right off. Be (laughs) impossible to find, you know? Oh, you you found some bleachers off on the Mm -hmm. side there. Get Mm -hmm. up underneath the bleachers. Mm -hmm. Hopefully your phone's at a hundred percent and just (laughs) scroll, you know, you're Mm -hmm. on Reddit for a reason, (laughs) you know? Mm -hmm. So that's what I would say, because then... (laughs) If if nobody can find you, hey, you know, fair enough. I mean, that might get like suspicious, like after a while, if people like see you at the beginning and you, they don't see you for like five hours, maybe wouldn't be the best thing. So like, I would like, I personally would probably just like fake something, be like, yeah. sorry, I'm ill, bye. That's that's probably <laughs> way better. Just be like, I have the flu, I'm not coming in, bye. You know, yeah. like, and then <clears throat> I think it might be COVID. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Yeah, and then whenever yeah. uh, whenever you're called on to volunteer or you're mm-hmm. forced to volunteer, you're gonna mm-hmm. conveniently be sick the whole time, and soon enough they should probably just stop. Yeah. They'll probably stop. I mean, hopefully, it's not a regular thing, like. But yeah, yeah. good luck to Killer Queen, I guess. Uh, okay, so mm-hmm. I got a couple more tabs if you don't mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, yeah, we, I mean, I'm, I'm I'm ready. Okay. So uh, this is this is the last kind of. Uh, more mm-hmm. other thing the other ones are kind of like relationship mm-hmm. weird things because i think those mm-hmm. are some of the more juicier questions and kind of mm-hmm. save, the, save yeah. the good stuff for the end yeah yeah for sure so uh i want to run away i am a 15 year old female i don't feel comfortable in my house my family is nice and supporting but i hate living like this i feel imprisoned i want to visit things do uh herb bucks u-r-b-e-x and walk around at night I can't do it because it's dangerous where I live. Why do I hate my current life that much? And uh, what can I do to replace the need to uh, to feel the run away? And what is this word here? Yeah, ur- urbex. I... Urban exploration. It's, mm. it's. I should have figured it was some fucking young kid <laughs> slang for something stupid. She she wants to urbanly <laughs> explore. So okay, how would we help out? Uh, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so mm-hmm. her name is uh, mm-hmm. Yemen Barrist, I think. Okay. Again, Yemen Barrist, girl, like, if you say that your area is dangerous, then I would maybe not go outside and run away, at least not without a plan. Mm-hmm. And if you say that your family is, like, generally supportive, then maybe you should find out what the problem is and why you feel that way. Like, again, you're 15. I've been a very depressed 15 year old. It fucking sucks. Like I can definitely relate, but you know, maybe talk to your friends about it. And if I think it's really bad, maybe you can stay over a weekend with them and see how you feel then. But like for your own safety, please don't do something drastic. Or like, if you really want to do urban exploration, maybe find like a friend or two to do it with at least. So, you know, like stay safe first and foremost like mm-hmm. don't endanger yourself needlessly and yeah i mean it sounds to me like it might be like more of a mental health problem so like i really hope that maybe you can like work it out maybe talk to some people about it that you trust or you know someone online sometimes you may maybe if you don't have like a, someone like in your life it's always good to like at least talk to someone about it even on the internet but yeah good luck <laughs> Uh, I think this is actually a real easy answer here. Mm-hmm. You're 15, mm-hmm. yeah. girl. Welcome to welcome, yeah. welcome to adolescence. Welcome mm-hmm. to the start of your life. I remember. I mean, I don't want to yeah. be like condescending, well, like you know, know, like like like. I mean, like I get it, but you know, <laughs> like it, it it definitely feels real when you're 15, or yes. like it feels very serious, and that's like the worst yeah. thing that you've been through. So like, I mean, like it it probably will go away, but like in the moment, you know, talk to people about it. Please stay safe. Well, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm not trying to be condescending here, Anna. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm not trying to be condescending, but like, yeah. you know, okay, I am. I'm. I'm mm-hmm. a little more than double her age. I'm 34. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. I remember what it was like when I was 14. And I remember my childhood. Like, I would pray to the gods that my parents would let me just stay in the house at night because I was out <laughs> fucking around with my friends in the neighborhood. I get like, mm-hmm. and it's COVID. <laughs> You're an adolescent in COVID. You, you, you started your adolescence. You started your teenage blossoming. Mm-hmm. You know, not just to be a woman, but as just mm-hmm. a, as a child you know, blossoming with COVID Mm -hmm. where all of a sudden you can't go outside where you Mm -hmm. can't explore, where you can't do these things. You're going to have these feelings. I still have these feelings, you know, Mm -hmm. like I'll just be sitting at work one day and it's just like, I have nothing to do. I have all my groceries. Mm -hmm. I have everything. And I'm like, fuck, I just want to go play disc golf or like, I just really want to get out of the fucking house. And like, welcome to life. Like, I I, Mm -hmm. I don't want to be condescending and I I don't want to give you that answer, Mm -hmm. but like, this is what life is like growing up. Mm-hmm. You're going to want to scratch that itch. Get mm-hmm. a couple of friends. Go scratch that itch. Mm-hmm. Your family is nice and supporting. My family was too. And I fucking hated them. Like, it's... <laughs> welcome to being welcome to being 15. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it really is like that. Like, again, when you're 15, then you yeah. kind of hate everything. Like, every other week, it happens. It's okay. It sucks. But you it know, just, just sucks. Yeah, I mean, just... Talk to people, try to work through it. And again, yeah. like if you want to go outside at night, then take some friends with you. If you say your area is dangerous, then, you know, like, you know, d- it, don't yeah. endanger yourself. Well, it was, it was like, uh, cause last week there was a question where this kid, where this, mm-hmm. uh, this, this male was like, I might mm-hmm. be trans, you know, he was wanting to transition mm-hmm. at 13 mm-hmm. and I'm all mm-hmm. for doing all that stuff, but dude, you're 13, give it some I mean, time. Just give it, just give it, like, with these tattoos. Mm-hmm. I didn't think of, mm-hmm. get, like, no, okay, one mm-hmm. of the tattoos, I was like, I will get that immediately <laughs> because I knew exactly what I wanted. But, mm-hmm. like, every other tattoo I've ever done, every shirt, like, this mm-hmm. shirt took me 20 minutes to decide if I wanted mm-hmm. or not. And it was on sale. <laughs> it was on sale. So, mm-hmm. like, uh, you know, when you're, when you're that young, you know, your mind is a thousand miles a minute. You know, just, mm-hmm. like, cool. If you want to transition, I'm all for it. Go for it. If you want to run mm-hmm. away... I'm kind of all for it, but like at the same time, think it through. Your family is supportive. You don't live in that nice of a neighborhood. You hit on so many great points, Anna, but at the mm-hmm. same time, like just give it a little bit. Just think it through and you're mm-hmm. right. Find somebody to talk yeah. through it, talk through with it. And then it goes back to the yeah. doctor thing. Be open and honest <laughs> about it. Mm-hmm. So Yeah, that's true. I, th- I It was like a while ago that I read something that really resonated with me. That was something like, if you feel like you hate everyone, just eat something and if you feel like everyone hates you just go to sleep and then in the, <laughs> and then you might probably you will probably feel better about it and honestly it's true like sometimes you just need to like sleep it off or like just take a little bit of time and you're like actually it was fine maybe it was just my period it's not that serious <laughs> hit that reset button real quick mm-hmm. yeah just hit that reset button once and see if the problem is still there and then you yeah. can figure it out what it is Ah, uh, so we got uh, mm-hmm. Totes and Approps 88. Mm-hmm. Totes and Approps mm-hmm. 8 uh, says, mm-hmm. this guy who is a 27-year-old male who I, mm-hmm. 25-year-old female, work with keeps touching me. When I first read this, I thought she said that she was 15. Mm-hmm. I was like, ooh. ooh. That's why yeah, I, that, that was... I was like, girl, okay. you need to get a taser. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 15 would be very questionable. Yeah. I mean, this still sounds a little questionable, but yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. It, Go uh, on. <laughs> Him and I used to have a thing about a year ago. We never dated. We were just kind of in the talking mm-hmm. phase for about a month with myself and another guy mm-hmm. had gone. Um, mm-hmm. We're kind of in a talking phase for about a month while myself mm-hmm. and another guy had gone out, out separate our separate ways. I didn't know we would end up mm-hmm. getting back. He never got over mm-hmm. me. He always says he loves me and has cried in front of me about the situation so many times. Mm-hmm. He brings it up every day, although I tell him I'm no longer interested. He comes into my office at work and tries to hug me while uh, she's working. I tell him to stop. And then every time I get, ah, excuse me, my fizzy water's coming back. <laughs> then every time I get up from my seat while he's there, he grabs my ass. I've told him to stop, not to come up to me anymore and everything. He gets sad and says he didn't mean anything by it and then walks out. Uh, she says uh, she doesn't care about his feelings and wants some advice. I'm paraphrasing a little bit because it, you know exactly where the story go- kind of goes from there. <laughs> So how mm-hmm. are we going to help totes and approps eight? I mean, I mean, even though, like she said already that she's not interested, sometimes you really have to be harsh about it. Like if the guy just really doesn't want to let go, just be like, dude, fuck off. Like, I yeah. don't want anything to do with you. 
and if it's like at the workplace get like your hr involved or like if it's really like in a like kind of inappropriate touching and if it's really like really pushy and making you uncomfortable then maybe go to it to like you know your boss like again hr and just like well i yeah, think if, 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 i don't if think you don't he listen works to you then maybe i don't think he works with her. Didn't she say this was at work? Or he comes into my I... office at work and tries to hug me while I'm mm. typing. So I want to mm. maybe say that she's a receptionist mm. and that he comes mm. into her job. Oh. Or he oh, may I, be in I... another department. Yeah, I understood it's like maybe in the same kind of office building and Nihila like comes to her desk or something. But I mean, yeah. either way, like, I mean, if you work together, then, you know go to hr or go to your boss like if he won't listen to you then he might listen to some, someone yeah. else unfortunately or again like if he still doesn't take like a fuck off for an answer then at some point you have to get someone else involved or if it's like if he's coming in and he doesn't work there then you know call security or yeah. whoever is like responsible for that because that's that's really creepy and like borderline stalkerish like that's you know, that's bad yeah yeah the, the, the vibes are rancid just no <laughs> <laughs> well you know um uh, I had a I had a, had a, mm-hmm. uh, a previous sex addict on my last mm-hmm. podcast who I interviewed Ooh. about some things, um, and he had kind of told me an interesting mm-hmm. thing where, mm-hmm. um, like, when a guy and a girl are dating, or when I should say two people mm-hmm. are dating, and mm-hmm. uh, especially when sex is kind of a thing, the last time you hook up, if you don't know it's the last time you hook up, there may be a lot of lingering feelings, or it's the last time you do something. You know, like where if if the person is that's breaking up with you is already checked out mm-hmm. and you don't know that there can be a lot of mm-hmm. weird lingering things that go on. So mm-hmm. when when it, from the beginning here, you know, where she says that uh, with myself, and another guy had gone out, uh, gone out, gone out our separate ways. I think she forgot some mm-hmm. words in there. He probably didn't know that she was seeing another guy and that she mm-hmm. just kind of fucked off with the other guy. And so she just kind of mm-hmm. left him hanging there. So my thought is that because you left him high and dry, he's got all that mm-hmm. lingering stuff because he may have never gotten the mm-hmm. closure he wanted or maybe needed because he's that crazy of a mm-hmm. psychopath. Um, those things are a lot harder to deal with because mm-hmm. you weren't you weren't dealing with the feelings that he had. I mean, and this could be role reverse too. You know, you're not dealing with the feelings that she had for quite some mm-hmm. time. Um, I, I kind of go back to something I go back to all the time when it comes to guys like mm-hmm. this. Uh, extreme violence works in very, very weird ways because, you know, <laughs> especially you can drill into somebody's head a million times over, but when mm-hmm. you take those drastic steps to do something, that's mm-hmm. kind of where things get really interesting. Um, mm-hmm. uh, th- this is a good example. I used an ex-girlfriend of mine was having problems with a guy that she used to have mm-hmm. deal uh, issues with when, when I was a senior in high school. Um, he would do some very, very questionable things that would now be considered sexual harassment. I said, mm-hmm. kick him in the dick. Just as hard as soccer kick him real mm-hmm. quick the next time he sexually harasses you. Mm-hmm. Promise you, no more issues. Or slap him across the face. Well, mm-hmm. she kept complaining and I was like, just try what I said. Mm-hmm. Brought her knee right up in between his legs. Guess who wasn't a problem anymore? <laughs> you know? I mean, if this guy yeah. slaps your ass, bring him in mm-hmm. real close, lift that knee yeah, up, girl. Yeah, I mean, if he's like, like she says that he's, you know, hugging her, which is kind of like, could be friendly, but like it definitely comes off weird. And like, especially like she said it was like a year ago or something, if I remember uh, correctly. Yeah, it um, talking phase for a month while her and somebody else, they ne- he never got over it. He's cried about the situation. It sounds like mm-hmm. it's it's been quite an ordeal. Like I think I would. I, mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, a year ago. Sorry, that was at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Yep, a year ago. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if it's been a year and he still doesn't take no for an answer, then, you know, either, you know, be very, very harsh with him or like uh, Jared said, just, you know, kick him in the balls or slap him or oh, hey. at least get, or maybe get someone else involved. Like if you don't want to do that, then, yeah, you know. Timmy comes in. Oh, hey, Timmy, what's up? Ah, no more touchies. No more touchies. Mm-hmm. You know, or if you got a high heel, ooh, those high heels with those pointed tips, just, yeah, just in between, in yeah, just in mm-hmm. between the fellas. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I promote so much mm-hmm. violence on this podcast. It's horrible. I mean, what, what is it? Uh, what is it that, that, that all the mm-hmm. stupid politicians say? Mm-hmm. Video games promote violence. No, just <laughs> violence promotes violence. I mean, I mean, I am ideally against violence, but again, if there's no other way, sometimes you just gotta like. Yeah. If if someone doesn't want to listen to you, then maybe they can just like 
feel it in their balls and then progressive steps progressive steps Mm -hmm. and then it's it's really it's always it's always Mm -hmm. funny because uh you know you you Mm -hmm. think about things you know like Mm -hmm. when when uh, levy calls the cops Mm -hmm. be like hey Mm -hmm. you know why'd you kick him in the dick timmy why don't you tell him why Mm -hmm. i kicked you what did i say to you right (laughs) afterward what have you been constantly Mm -hmm. doing to me you know, that's mm-hmm. one thing I, I, I think is great because you can inflict massive violence on somebody mm-hmm. that has been doing things that are maybe borderline mm-hmm. or legal or even illegal. Mm-hmm. They're not going to say shit because, oh, well, officer, I kept touching her butt and giving her hugs when she didn't want to. Well, yeah, douchebag. Mm-hmm. Now I'm going to charge you with sexual harassment as well as you got a <laughs> hospital bill. You got a foot. Congratulations. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I mean, even with that, again, if it's like within the same company and like if the if a boss just <laughs> says, hey. I mean, sometimes it is kind of sad that, like, yeah. a man won't listen to a woman, but he will listen to another man or, like, someone, like, higher up than him on the ladder mm-hmm. and be like, if someone else tells him, hey, dude, that's really not fucking okay. Yeah. Or, like, stop this or you will be hired, fired, then um, that might get the message across way better yeah. if he actually had, had, like, consequences for it. So this is kind of, I'm glad that I saved this one for this podcast. Um, so I think it's ridiculous that people are offended mm-hmm. by being left on red. Uh, I had a conversation with a friend who was previously complained to me about this and decided, I decided to Google it because apparently this mm-hmm. individual never mm-hmm. had this problem. Uh, and I see numerous articles okay. about it. Mm-hmm. I've, ne- I don't even know, I didn't even know mm-hmm. that it was a thing. Well, uh, mm-hmm. curbs and spices, you live a very mm-hmm. cherished life, my friend, because this is mm-hmm. a very fucking real thing. Um, and he's like, what the frick happened? Are we not allowed to live our own lives? Must we sit by and wait and respond to our, our messages immediately, instantly? If you want a conversation, how about a call? Remember that function? I'm either busy or don't have the energy or I forgot. Not a big deal. Y'all need to, y'all need to find fulfillment in things other than instant <laughs> messaging. Half rant, half I couldn't believe this was a thing people get upset about. And then he throws a bunch of edits in there. But mm-hmm. uh, let's hear you. Let's, uh, so what do you think about, I mean, yeah, I mean, on the whole, I really, really agree with him. Like, I, like, of course it can be frustrating if you're left on red, but at the same time, like I've had all that situation with like friends when they're like, Ugh, you read my message. Why didn't you reply? And it's like, sorry, like, again, I have a life or sometimes I just, you know, I read the message and I am busy and then I try to remember to reply later, but I don't, it happens, which is why. I, which is why I recommend to literally everyone I know, just turn off red receipts on every kind of social media you can. Like, you don't know who read your shit and they don't know you read their shit. And it's like so much easier for both of you because I also got like, sometimes a kind of anxiety, oh, this person read my message like five hours ago and you know, they didn't reply, what's going on? And if I just don't see it, I don't think about it. And you know, I can reply in my own time. And you know, again, if you're like, I don't know, Depends, of course, on the situation. Like, if you're, again, planning something and you just, like, leave someone hanging, then that's kind of not cool yeah. and you should at least explain yourself. But if it's, you know, a random conversation like, hey, how are you doing? Then no one should be expected to reply within five minutes or else you're a bad person, yeah. right? I mean, I, mm-hmm. I'm i kind of twofold mm-hmm. on this. I think mm-hmm. I think it's ridiculous that I feel offended mm-hmm. when I get left and read mm-hmm. too at times. But mm-hmm. at the same time, it kind of tells me mm-hmm. the person you are. And... Like mm-hmm. with the, with a girl that I was talking about way earlier mm-hmm. on that would take like a day or two to respond. It was insane mm-hmm. because like I'll wait. Like when it comes to dating apps, mm-hmm. like I'm always by my phone. If my phone goes off, mm-hmm. I look at it. I'm that kind of guy. Mm-hmm. I, ju- I just feel like it, mm-hmm. if you're texting me, you want to mm-hmm. convey inf- information and you want to have a conversation with me. That's who mm-hmm. I am. So when mm-hmm. you hit me up, I'm going to respond to you as quickly as I can. And if I see mm-hmm. your message, I try to get back to it as quickly as possible, you know, and so, like, I'll wait, like, 45 minutes to respond to a girl's message on a dating app because mm-hmm. apparently if I respond immediately, I look needy, I guess. But, like... Yeah, that, that I always found yeah. weird when you analyze, like, how quickly someone responds. Like, that's... Yeah. I don't know. That is weird. But, I mean, I also have, like, friends where sometimes we just have, like, entire conversations where we reply, like, every six hours. And, you know, we can still have that kind of conversation. Yeah. Like, I... Like, that's perfectly fine. But, again, depends really on the situation. Yeah. But... If you're like, again, talking to someone like in a dating app or, you know, actively making plans or having like a more active conversation, let's say, and then you just get left mm-hmm. on red on like a very weird place. Then I, like it, it is frustrating yeah. and I feel that. But I also think it's probably good to just like take a step back from all that and say like, OK, hey, this is texting. It's not that serious. 
Like, well, yeah, like in situation, like, th- and this mm-hmm. is where I, I deviate from mm-hmm. the being left on red, where I'm like, this is a problem mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. magically, when I responded to her message and I called mm-hmm. her out and I, I said mm-hmm. more than I should have, hundred mm-hmm. percent agree. I should have just been like, mm-hmm. hey, I should have just done a quick quip and then unmatched her mm-hmm. instead of throwing mm-hmm. everything that I threw at her. But like, mm-hmm. it's just you can you read my message and you unmatch mm-hmm. me five minutes after I send it, which tells me you're actively on your phone. But when it takes you six mm-hmm. hours or three hours or an extended period mm-hmm. of time to respond to my message after you immediately mm-hmm. read it on a dating app mm-hmm. or some place where you're actively trying to promote mm-hmm. a relationship with somebody, mm-hmm. I don't get that. Like, mm-hmm. I, I mean, I understand if you can read a message immediately and not respond to it because of a situation that you're in, mm-hmm. I get that. But at the same time, it shouldn't take you six to eight hours to respond to messages if you're actively mm-hmm. trying to cultivate with somebody in a situation. Mm-hmm. Like if I, if it's a work, if it's mm-hmm. in work or if it's, you know, on mm-hmm. a dating site or if it's a contract or if it's somebody else that you're mm-hmm. trying to have a relationship with. But if it's mm-hmm. like you and me, Anna, like I, I send you an email. <laughs> I don't give a shit. You know, like I've got two weeks uh, before the podcast is supposed to come out mm-hmm. before we're supposed to respond to it. And mm-hmm. she gets to it when she gets to it. She mm-hmm. knows that the podcast is on um, Mm-hmm. 10 17 of 2021 and if mm-hmm. she needs to tell me something she'll respond when she has time that's fine mm-hmm. with me but if i'm like yeah. hey anna da, 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 like let's meet up or like mm-hmm. hey you're kind of cute i'm now we're over here on <laughs> tinder you mm-hmm. know like i'm gonna like maybe mm-hmm. respond like don't you don't have to immediately respond mm-hmm. to me within five minutes but like kind of give me a pace mm-hmm. here to where i can go oh this yeah. is this is the pacing of our conversation mm-hmm. that's fine mm-hmm. you know yeah i mean I guess maybe the problem is, is that may- maybe this person does not want to cultivate the relationship yeah. in the same way that you do, which is again is like kind of sad that, I mean, like I know people or like myself, sometimes I just go on a dating app when I'm bored and I don't really take it that seriously, which I know it's kind of shitty, maybe, probably, and, uh... when it happened. <laughs> <laughs> Calling myself out here. I'm sorry to all the men who've ever matched me or the women and I've ignored them. Or like, I mean, I mean, like, I am kind of more lenient because I know for myself sometimes again, like I read a message and I'm like, okay, I want to do something else right now, but I will reply later, but mm. I forget. Like, yeah. <laughs> like it happens. That's fine. But yeah, if it's like, a, but yeah, I mean, if it's like a constant thing, then obviously that is a, very frustrating. And if you're actually actively trying to have a conversation with someone and they don't reply, they reply like every eight hours, like I did that and I know that it sucks. <laughs> and at that point, like, it's perfectly fine if the other person just says, okay, I don't want to deal with this bullshit and just unmatches or like whatever. I just find it weird that we both swipe right on each other. <laughs> we've both sent each other the unit. Like she took mm-hmm. the time out of her dick. Cause like on mm-hmm. Bumble, I mm-hmm. swipe right, you swipe right. You mm-hmm. have to send me the message. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. it's nice because it's like, okay, it forces, it forces the women to take that initial mm-hmm. step. And it's like, they're yeah. showing initiative. They're showing that they mm-hmm. are interested. And then they mm-hmm. immediately counter it with it's like you're not showing like it's like if i'm talking to a Mm -hmm. contractor about doing a job Mm -hmm. or something like that if it takes him like two or three days to respond i'm gonna be like he's either very very busy or this Mm -hmm. dude is just i'm gonna go with somebody else Mm -hmm. because if he's that busy or if he doesn't if Mm -hmm. he's not that talkative i want to talk to somebody i know that where if i'm like Mm -hmm. dude my 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 roof just caved in i need to know that he's (laughs) going to be able he's going to see that within within a few minutes or Mm -hmm. a couple hours and send Mm -hmm. somebody out immediately instead of my roof has been leaking and now i got to mm-hmm. go to... Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, you, you see where I'm going with that, so... Mm-hmm. But I am with you there. Like, I, I'm mm-hmm. offended that I'm offended mm-hmm. that I get I get left on red and I, I'm offended mm-hmm. that I'm offended. <laughs> so. I mean, I'm also... I get offended that sometimes I'm the person who leaves people in it and I'm like, ah, oh, that was kind of shitty, but... Yeah. It'd be like that sometimes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So... But I guess, like, yeah, I mean, my... Like, mm-hmm. the moment I like removed red receipts on like every social media I could was an instant improvement to my life, honestly, because again, I used to have like friends in high school who were like very much like, you, you know, you read this, why didn't you say anything like very needy about it? And I'm just like, maybe I had something else to do. I don't care. Why are you being annoying about this? And so I just like turned it off and then, you know, no one can come for me at like that. What's great is that uh, mm-hmm. I think on Android, like you can kind of expand mm-hmm. some of the messages on some of the apps you mm-hmm. get and you can decide mm-hmm. whether or not you click on it to go into it or you can just swipe left and remove mm-hmm. the notification. <laughs> and so I, I know this is coming out yeah. way, way after. So Natalie, if you're listening, I did this on purpose. I read your message. I swiped left and I'm not going to respond to it for the next couple of days because I'm pissed off. Oh. <laughs> ah, yeah, Natalie deserves that. 
Yeah, she. Just, I mean, also like she does it all the time. She'll just mm-hmm. like, she, like she'll be like, "Hey, like we'll play games mm-hmm. at two, and then she just mm-hmm. fuck off. Like she just disappears. Mm-hmm. And like yeah. I'm so used to it now that I just like I mm-hmm. expect it. Like if if the day goes a specific way, mm-hmm. and she's like, "Oh, I'll, you know, I'll call you back at two, or I'll do this." I just I don't expect anything in return. Mm-hmm. But then mm-hmm. it's it, it was it was adorable because she'll like she she texted me. She's like, "Hey." Mm-hmm. Good morning. I was like, oh, she took a nap. Okay, that's what mm-hmm. happened throughout the day. Because I'm like, mm-hmm. it's like a guessing game. Like, what happened to Natalie? Did her friend call her? Did she, you know, like, it's 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 a fun thing that I get to do now. But mm-hmm. then, like, I responded back. And then she just fucked off and disappeared for another 12 hours. And I'm like, yeah, oh, whatever. So, yeah, she, she deserves what's coming her way. But mm-hmm. I'm curious about this gentleman here. Because mm-hmm. apparently, bitch, I'm a ghost. Uh, says that mm-hmm. I, a 21 year old female, broke up with my boyfriend who is 24 male for saving naked pictures of other girls online. They've been dating since mm-hmm. 2017, and I saw mm-hmm. that he had saved a bunch of pictures of girls from OnlyFans that were leaked from Reddit, and it made me feel insecure and worthless about myself. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be with somebody that doesn't respect me, and I get everyone watches porn, but it's different when you are literally saving pictures of the girls posing just in a bikini. Or of the same girl, just pictures of her. Um, or looking at swingers from our city state. Uh, we should talk about... I think that's like the bigger le- red flag almost. <laughs> we would talk about threesomes when we were drunk for fun. But it became something uh, that he always wanted to talk about. And I kind of got tired. Uh, there's only so much you can say. Blah, 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 blah. Mm. I have a lot to say, and I want to hear what you have to say first, because I'm about to go off on Bitch, I'm a Ghost. I mean, this is difficult. Like, like I, I generally, I don't really understand the concept of saving, like, porn on your phone, mm-hmm. just, like, in your photos. Like, personally, I just kind of like, okay, what if someone, like, sees it? Like, I don't know. Are you that horny? <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean... Like on one hand, like if you're still being like faithful and like not doing anything and just looking at porn, like I think I personally would be fine with it. And if she's just like insecure about him looking at other girls, then I think that's maybe more problem, more her problem than his. But it, but again, it, I don't know. The the, th- the threesome part kind of is a little weird because I mean I guess like a lot of guys maybe have this kind of fantasy, but if. I guess she didn't say it is. If she she said, yeah, it is like every dude's fantasy. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, it's not clear. Like, if she like went along with it at first, maybe he got kind of into it. But at that point, she should have also said, like, I don't really want to do this. Actually, if she doesn't want to do it, and he should respect that. But uh, uh, there's like I can see what she's coming from, but at the same time, I, I think she has like a lot of her own issues to work through. She's contradictory. Mm. she's very I, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry I'll, I, 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 yeah, I wanna, go I, ahead like I, I, <laughs> your, your problem is not that he saved mm-hmm. these nudes mm-hmm. your problem mm-hmm. is everything else with it because mm-hmm. I mean it, it goes on to say here he's, she's like but saving Addison Ray dancing to uh, WAP doesn't make me feel mm-hmm. com- doesn't make me feel comfortable like you can just watch a girl dancing and not get horny but she's okay with him watching porn um, your, your problem is mm-hmm. her problem is this her problem is the the threesome thing, the looking for swingers in other cities. Mm-hmm. You, when, when you entice him, when you have a conversation with a guy, you have to remember two things. Mm-hmm. He may not, he may be just kind of, you know, like, oh, Anna, it'd be fun to do blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. But then, mm-hmm. like, the more the conversation hints at it, it's his mm-hmm. way of subtly being like, hey, Anna, I, I really want you to try this cotton candy. Ha, ha, ha. I know you mm-hmm. don't really like it, but it's really good. But then you're like, oh, yeah, I should. Da, da, da. And then like a few weeks later, I bring it up. And then I can't keep... by mm-hmm. the next thing. I'm like, here, it's open. Go ahead and give it a sip. You know, it's mm-hmm. fresh. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it, you're, you're leading into something. So yeah, yeah, I mean... you found mm-hmm. something to finally break up with him. If mm-hmm. you're comfortable with him watching porn, but you're not OK to watching some girl in a bikini dance to WAP mm-hmm. sexually, mm-hmm. what's the fucking difference? What's the difference? Mm. You broke up with him because you finally hit, you found mm-hmm. something that you can finally go. It's all because of this. No, like it's fun when you yeah, talk he... about something <laughs> drunk. It's fun when you do all that shit. But at the same time, like it led into something. It got to the point where he got serious. You were like, no, I'm just mm-hmm. joking. And now mm-hmm. you're finding a reason to break up with him because he's 
-hmm. he was actively pursuing something that he thought was legitimate yeah i think like she also probably didn't like really talk to him a lot and be like like it doesn't sound like she said actively like hey i don't actually want to do this like please you know i don't want a threesome please stop asking about it like if he kept like asking about it after that that would be kind of bad but if she didn't really communicate that really well and like like i get that sometimes as a girl you kind of like go along and be like haha okay i hope he stops talking about it instead of like actually like causing a conflict but if he kept like going and going at some point you have to decide like no actually i don't want to do this and i have to tell him that like like that because otherwise you know like it's no one's going to interpret it and, yeah. and be like oh maybe she didn't say yes that actively like so this is like difficult conversation but again girls women sometimes you have to be direct <laughs> and be like no i don't want this fuck off and like yeah. if the guy pursues it after that and that's on him but so, you kind of have to say something th this is a problem i run into a lot mm -hmm. sometimes i'll find mm -hmm. like i i like I, I, mm -hmm. the titles are interesting mm -hmm. and then it goes into mm -hmm. this whole fat paragraph of <laughs> shit i just don't want to read because it's like mm -hmm. a lot of the stuff that i find on here go mm -hmm. like a, a lot of people that have these relationship mm -hmm. issues i feel like you know mm -hmm. what the answer is already you're just looking for mm -hmm. validation but like she's yeah, yeah, she's yeah. like uh what, what is it um we don't have sex when we do it's rare he barely even kisses me, only probably when we would see each other, and that's it. But we don't make out or anything. He doesn't make any effort to try and be intimate and made me so depressed just questioning myself. I saw so many Girl, pictures just break up with him. You yeah. don't need to go on Reddit to break up with him. No. Like, like th there's probably an issue. There's probably a reason why you guys aren't having mm -hmm. sex. You know, it's like we barely have sex when we do. It's rare. He barely kisses me, but it's probably only when we would see each other. How often are you seeing this dude? If uh, you're... How would... I mean, the, the sentence is weird, but like, how would you kiss each other if you don't see each other? But that's yeah, like if you're not thing. if you're not seeing this dude, obviously not having <laughs> sex, and if he's trying to initiate sex on the random few days that he does see you and you deny him, mm -hmm. he's probably getting like I can make a whole bunch of assumptions here, but and my mm -hmm. one assumption is this: you rarely see each other when you do, and you do have mm -hmm. sex, and he tries to initiate sex, mm -hmm. you tell him no, mm -hmm. so he just he, mm -hmm. he's like, oh, every time I come over, it's not going to be sex, and then mm -hmm. you, just every time he approaches you, you you deny him. Mm -hmm. There's a pattern. You deny him so he doesn't yeah. try as often. And then all of a sudden mm -hmm. you're not having sex as much. As you, and it's like, bitch, just initiate it. If you want to fuck his brains out, just do it. Like that one And girl if you that, don't, then break yeah. up with him and fuck someone else. Yeah. Like, like that one girl who approached me. It's like, I want to suck mm -hmm. your dick. I know what you want. Thank you. I'm going to go back mm -hmm. to watching my documentary. That's I'm not in the mood, you know? So Yeah, I mean, again, like, just be honest about it. And if the other person says no, that's fine. But just be like, communication is important. Thank you. Thank you. As, as always. <laughs> Last question here, because this is a good mm -hmm. one. Longtime guy friend sent me a dick pic, and I'm so upset about it. We've okay. known each other for 11 years. Mm -hmm. We didn't talk a ton when I was married, but I'm newly divorced. Do not congratulate me. I'm devastated. So he and I have been chatting more lately. He's in another state. Mm -hmm. I have no attraction to him at all. And I've said I'm not interested in dating now, especially not now. So yesterday I opened up a message on Snapchat, and there it is. His dick. And not just a picture. Oh no, it was a video. I was so shocked and pissed that he would do that. And then I just had the overwhelming urge to cry. I feel violated somehow. I feel like majorly overreacting, but now I don't even want to talk to him. I don't understand why he thought something like that would be okay, especially with the situation I'm in and being mm -hmm. newly divorced. I feel violated and completely disrespected. Am I overreacting? But also, why do guys do this shit? I mean, honestly, like as a guy, why do guys do this shit? I don't know. <laughs> like I've I've yeah. had girlfriends be like, "Hey, I want to mm -hmm. see it," and I'm like, "No." I mean, like if you want to see it, like send me something see it in person. To, like, <laughs> like come see it in person. But like I've had where like uh, with one of my ex girlfriends was in states away from me, and she's like, "I want to see it," and I was like, "How bad do you want to see it?" She's like, "I want to see it." It's like, all right, give me a second, you know. But like at the same time, I'm just like, this is awkward. Like I just I don't see any like I don't see anything appealing about it, you know. Yeah, no, I mean, like, I've, I've gotten the occasional dick pic and it's not, like, if you, if you think a girl wants to see a penis without pro prompting, she doesn't, she really, really doesn't, your dick doesn't look that good, like. There's no. a reason why the lights are off when I'm doing it myself, <laughs> you know, it's like, even I don't find it appealing, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah, and it's, I mean, and again, especially like the guy when he knows that she's divorced and that she's upset and when she said that she, she doesn't want a relationship. You don't just don't do that. Like no. I like I, I mean, wanted. Should... 
I wonder maybe she's emotional time. because of the mm. divorce and that's why she's like upset maybe violation is a bit of a harsh word but again if she's upset and newly divorced and she said she doesn't want a relationship you don't send her a fucking dick pic well i mean like you don't send her one anyway but it is sexual know, harassment it, isn't it wouldn't you say it is sexual harassment if mm-hmm. it's unsolicited i guess yeah i guess it yeah i mean le- legal is probably murky but it's definitely like shitty yeah. behavior don't yeah. do that like either way <laughs> I, I don't really have, like, why do men do it? Because apparently they think it's going to make women horny or something like that. Like, I don't... I mean, I want to met, meet one guy who sent a dick pic and it worked out for him. Like, just a single one. I was on a, podca- <laughs> I was on a podcast way okay. back in April where the girl, okay. like, mm-hmm. went through a horror... F- she's like, she literally came out... You, I'm pretty sure you could actually... Li- I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure you can actually listen to it where she comes out and she's mm-hmm. like, I went through a horror phase. She's like, I like... <laughs> I don't even want to say all the shit she had said because she like I don't want to put words in her mouth but she was like send me everything I want the pictures I want the videos I want this and this and this mm-hmm. I was like I know plenty of men on the internet that would love you right now <laughs> you know so but like my question is I mean like, I guess if she asks for it then yeah. you know like if she asks for it and the guy sent her a pic that's fine but if you just send a girl a random dick pic without prompting do you really think it's going to work out like a lot of guys did do. it ever work out for anyone like who even comes up with that idea i don't, I don't know there have been some but... questionable tactics that i've used that have worked out in the past and, and, and empowered me i'm not going to talk about it because everyone's heard it a thousand times but my question is the context of the conversation mm-hmm. like if you're talking all day every day you're having that mm-hmm. intimate connection with somebody where you're talking real mm-hmm. deep and real like closely mm-hmm. about things mm-hmm. he probably was being let he probably felt like he was being led on and thought he would make a very very bold first move I mean, if she said that she's not looking for a relationship. But again, we go back to the conversation we had about dating, where it's very odd, where, you know, where we talk about, like, how much is she really putting out there? Is she just like, oh, I'm not really into a relationship, but I love talking to you every day. Tony is awesome. I'm glad you're there for me. You're this, you're that, blah, I mean, blah, blah. And then you're I mean, like, from the sounds of it, like, I mean, from the sounds of it that she is, like, in a very, like, she's generally very upset right now. She's newly divorced. You would probably know that. And if she said that she's overwhelmed, that she doesn't really want to deal with a relationship right now, I think you can take her at her word for it in yeah. this case. I, I, again, I, yeah. just don't send unsolicited dick pics in yeah. any case. Like, even if you think you might have something with a girl, you will not have anything with her after that, probably. There's, like, a one in a million chance that it's going to work. And I'm not, I don't play the lottery for a reason. Yeah. Yeah. Don't don't play that lottery. Just, it's not that hard to just be a nice guy. Like you, Hmm. you, you have other things going for you than because your dick is not that pretty. Like, let's be real. If I was her, I I would, I would try to determine, Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. like if, if, if he's a, if he's Mm -hmm. a little dude, just Mm -hmm. Google big white dick or even big black dick. (laughs) <laughs> and just be like, yo, this is what's hitting me right now. I don't think you're going to be like, hey, that's a nice dick. Check this out, you know, or be like, look at mm-hmm. like, be like, hey, this is my friends with benefits. Nice try, though, mm-hmm. you know, or just be like, oh, that's cute. Let me show you this. And then just send him a dick pic back. He's not I mean, gonna... just send one back and be like, yeah. hey, this is mine. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> be like, look at what I'm packing. Oh, but you didn't know this about me. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. It's just. You have every, I, she has every right to be thoroughly upset. She has every right to cry. You yeah. have every right to feel violated. Mm-hmm. That's like, yeah. even when a girl asks mm-hmm. me for it, I'm still like, do you like, I mean, I'll send it, but like, do you really want to fucking see that? That's weird. <laughs> like, I don't like the way it looks. I don't feel like I'm very right? self Like, I, I don't like, know. Like, like human bodies are not that attractive. If you really look at them, in my opinion, like, like, boobs are nice, like everything oh. else. Like, <laughs> You know, yeah, because I, I was going to be like, yeah, boobs are good. Like, yeah, that's the one part of the body I will, no, yeah, send like, it my way, you know. But like anything downstairs, like, it's not that pretty if you look at it. Like, unless it's like really photoshopped porn actors, maybe, but probably not your like midnight pic with your phone and flash, like. You are so right with that. Like, I'm very, like, I'm very, like, it's like my pizzas. Mm-hmm. I'm very particular mm-hmm. about the way my mm-hmm. pizzas look and taste. I'm very particular mm-hmm. about the photos that I see. There's, Mm -hmm. there is that thing that everyone is like, Mm -hmm. nope, yep, I like that. Mm -hmm. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know. It's just fucking, Mm -hmm. yeah, whatever. (laughs) Dudes are weird. I'm sorry. Give him my number. I'll send him a bunch of dick pics. (laughs) See if he (laughs) likes it. Hey, bro, check it out. (laughs) Oh, my God. Well, Anna, I really appreciate Mm -hmm. you coming on. Uh, Mm -hmm. We're we're actually hitting a pretty decent mark here. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. 
So uh, I'm just kind of curious. Uh, again, uh, you know, mm -hmm. I know you had said that your friend mm -hmm. has a podcast. Who were the, who where mm -hmm. we where can we find him again and all that good stuff? Um, yeah, the podcast is, podcast is called Before Nandor. He's um, you know a friend that I recently met also by being on his podcast. But you know, he's fun. He's just starting out, and I kind of want to like shout him out and maybe give him nice. like. A little bit of cloud if it works out that way. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I've noticed that uh, anytime I, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm featured on somebody mm -hmm. else's podcast, I usually have mm -hmm. a have a spike of about five or six extra mm -hmm. listeners every so often. Mm -hmm. So, you know, usually when somebody mm -hmm. listens, uh, I, w I would say the, the vast majority mm -hmm. of the time when somebody's like, oh, yeah, this this guy's cool, too. And they mm -hmm. like they like the guest. They'll go check him out. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, uh, if you wouldn't mind, just shoot me their information afterwards. So that mm -hmm. way I can link it because mm -hmm. uh, I'm really yeah, apparently bad sure. at Googling. But mm -hmm. hey, Anna, thanks for coming on. Mm -hmm. Thanks for listening to my dumb face. It's been an absolute pleasure. You know, you know, it's also been an absolute pleasure. You're a very cool guy, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, pleasure. It was a pleasure to be here. Well, mm -hmm. Anna, I'm going to say mm -hmm. good goodbye. I've got another podcast mm -hmm. actually coming up in 45 <laughs> minutes. So uh, yeah. we're going to talk about other things, though. So <laughs> okay. to everyone else that's out, out there listening, I love your dumb faces, and we'll see you mm -hmm. next time. <laughs>